Welcome to Uptown Rumble, heavy music in the Bronx. My name is Stephen Payne, director of the Bronx County Historical Society. Today is June 22nd, 2024, and we're here for an oral history with rights reserved. Um, so do you all want to go ahead and introduce yourselves real quickly? Um, yeah, I'm Alex Berman. Uh, <clears throat> I'm originally from uh, Mexico, born in Mexico, Veracruz. And I came here to the Bronx in 1986 with my mom and my stepdad. Great. And what uh, instrument do you play? I, I play drums. Uh, I used to play drums for Rights Reserve. Then I played with uh, Johnny Cage's Fake. And then uh, I have a current band called Ingana, drummer. Wonderful. Yeah. Thank you, Alex. Uh, Leon, what about you? Yeah, so I'm Leon Jeleno. I, uh, I play guitar for, I play guitar for Rights Reserved. Um, at one point, a very small period of time, played for Driven by Hatred, and I played in a band called Side. That was the most recent project. Um, I came to the Bronx probably around the same time, between '84 and '86. Um, lived with my lived in my grandparents' house, and then my parents took it over, and been here ever since. And around that time, in school. Alex and I met, um, we're in the same neighborhood, and we kind of just went from there and explored skateboarding first, music, and just excelled further. Great. Um, so, Alex, do you want to talk a little bit more about your family history? And um, do you know, for instance, like w what led your family to pick the Bronx in particular? And what, what what's the story behind that? Yeah. Um, so my my parents got divorced in Mexico, and I was like, <laughs> funny story. I think my my mom, when she was going through the divorce, she met my stepdad, which so happens to be the lawyer that was divorced. <laughs> awesome guy. Uh, he's, a, he's a great uh, stepdad, and uh, eventually we just came out here. I really didn't know I was too young. I was ten years old, and we just ended up in the Bronx. I guess it was affordable, you know. Yeah. My dad was, uh, at that time, it was, it's crazy because uh, in, in Mexico, you know, he was a lawyer. But out um, but out here, you know, laws are different. You have to study all over again. So in the meantime, he was a cab driver. And I thought it was cool that he was a cab driver because there was times when I was there with him and I seen some cool action from the 80s, you know, pulling out knives and fights and stuff. Wow. <laughs> and, uh, <coughs> and uh, yeah, so the Bronx was like, that's all I knew. I thought I was in freaking Disneyland, to be honest. Yeah. Because I, I, in that time, there was a lot of cool graffiti. You know, I got lucky to get on the trains with that, with all the graffiti. And um, I was watching already. I was already into like uh, break dancing and stuff just from the movies. You know, so yeah, it was fun to be out here in, in, in the Bronx. And I thought that's all it was. I didn't know anything about boroughs. You know, uh, but my mom used to. Uh, she was she was kind of like stay home. She was a stay home mom. So she took it upon herself, like every weekend, we would go out to the city and she'll take us to museums or go to Central Park, or just kind of explore the, uh, the city, you know, most of the times. Yeah. <clears throat> it was it was just that, like, you didn't need that much money for that. It's just a token, you know, a token. <laughs> and, uh, and get into the city and it has some money for some food and you, you walk around the city, explore it, like literally, which is funny because I still like to do that, you know, to this day, sometimes by myself. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, and uh, growing up out there, <clears throat> when I started going to the junior high school, which was, what was the name of it? Uh, the IS-174, yeah. yeah. Around yeah. that time is when I met Leon. I think Leon was in a in a class with my stepbrother, yeah. Victor. And then somehow I found out that he's getting into skateboarding. Or, or I don't know how, but we were really into skating, and I was into it, too. It was just getting into it. More than music, just before the music. I see, I see. And then he lived a couple of blocks away from me, so my stepbrother would like go out and hang out with him, and I would go there too. And that's how the you know the bonding, the connect, the connection happened. Um, from there, then from there, then that's when we started taking it. Uh, later on, later on with the music. Sure. But until uh, then, I was just saying, you know, at home, uh, exploring the city, being a parent's typical teenager, listening to all types of music, you know, the radio. I discovered hip hop and I was like, wow, this is the shit. Well, I never heard of that in my life, you know, 86, 87. So that was kind of like one of the first things I loved. I was already into heavier stuff, not heavy, I'm sorry. I was more into like just the typical rock classic stuff, and whatever poppy stuff, but coming here and listening to hip hop because we're in the Bronx, 
it was just like, what the hell is this? You know, I remember calling one of my cousins and putting the, the phone, you know, <laughs> into into the radio and be like, dude, you hear this? It's like, what is that? I'm like, I don't know. It's just American music. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's in Mexico, you know. So yeah, that, that's my my early beginnings coming out. Here. Do you remember what uh, what the first hip hop song that you heard was? And was it on the radio? Oh uh, yeah, it must have been. Uh, damn, I think I know. I know. Oh, Public Enemy number one. That wow, was, that was the one, man. That was the one, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was that was one that I was like, "What is this?" The beat was like so sick. You know? Yeah. And I, of course, me, I was in. I never knew I was going to become a drummer, but the beats like what got me because I didn't understand it. A word of English. Yeah, sure. You know, Spanish, my first uh, language, English, my second. So I was just like, I don't know what they're saying, but uh, the cadence, the rhythm, you know, and the beat. And later on, after I found out, it was like so funky because there was a lot of a lot of that stuff was sampled by James, you know, James, James Brown. Brown stuff. Yeah. And um, yeah, it was just the drums, man. Back then, it was that's what drum for you, man. So Public Enemy, then KRS One, Eric B and Rakim, you uh-huh. know, like all that stuff. Uh, yeah, Boogie Down Productions, uh, the early, early stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the first thing I heard, you know, Hoogie Raps. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and as far as IS-174, IS you said, right? Yeah. Um, do you remember what intersection I-74? Oh, damn. IS-174 is that? White Plains Road and Patterson. I think it's Patterson. I know it's White Plains Road. I forget what the cross street is, but yeah. I want to say Patterson. If that's not the one for the high school, so. we were really close to Stevenson and and uh, and, uh, and was it the project Stevenson? Yeah, Stevens, uh, Stevens, Stevenson Commons. Commons was yeah. By uh-huh. yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 was like further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Water. So where we were at, we were like uh, in a in a tiny little patch that kind of felt like suburb lights almost, right? Like I don't yeah, know if it was call it, they call it little Puerto Rico. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah, was yeah, like sure, more sure, houses. Sure. We were like. A little away from the projects and sure. all that, and like more yeah, messed sure, up areas, but sure he, he, yeah. But it was just a tiny like once you stepped out of there, like a couple of blocks, then you're like, okay, yeah, we're in the war zone. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I felt that way sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And did you have other family that um, was around you, or just your immediate no, family? No, literally, it was just my mom, my sister, yeah. uh, my stepdad, and uh, that's it. Then my other sister was born in the 90s and one of my one of my aunts came to stay with us like after a couple of years with my cousin okay yeah. wow wow so, and, and that's all I had yeah nobody else <laughs> and you might have said this already but um, I don't remember you saying this but how old were you when you came to the well, I was 10 years old You're 10 years yeah, old 10, okay yeah. 10 years old wow yeah straight going went into oh I don't know if you yeah, know this but I went, I went into this school because it's like they had ESL, I guess. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so it was, uh, but it was like in Westchester. Oh, yeah. wow. And that was a bad neighborhood, I remember. Yeah. That was like, I was like, oh, shit, but I still thought it was cool, because I'm like, oh, now I'm like, where all the breakers are at, you know? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah, yeah, graffiti, yeah, yeah. You know? And, um, uh, yeah, so that was that was my first school, because there's a lot of people that spoke Spanish there. Sure. Westchester, I don't know, yeah. Like, Near Westchester Square or something like yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Just, yeah, yeah. and I then see. and then from there, eventually, then I, I started going to my zone, right? The yeah, sure. And stuff like that. Yeah. Sure. And uh, when you were here in hip hop, you were seeing, you know, breaking. You were seeing graffiti all around you. Did you ever get into, you know, like breaking or graffiti? Or no, I like never that? did. I think I, when I was little, I might have done like pop locking, which, which is really bad. I think you got everybody. Was there. Of course, yeah. 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 Now graffiti never did because I guess I was not I was too young to go out there and yeah. bomb you know yeah stuff. sure and I didn't know anyone yeah so yeah but I was that same time that I was listening to all this stuff because it you know it was part of you know what we're living at in the Bronx like you have the radio I was listening to the radio to listen to pop music you know whatever was on the radio I don't know for Tears for Fears or something like that <laughs> uh, Dire Straits you know but then of and I knew some of the classic stuff but uh, yeah I wasn't so much into like any heavy i think i thought that funny that i brought dire straits when i first heard uh money for nothing uh-huh. i think that's the name of it that guitar lick thing i was like whoa that's heavy like i yeah. thought i was heavy yeah sure <laughs> i didn't know what was about to get into later on you know? so wow wow so i wasn't uh, my mind was already pretty open mind i would go to mexico every now and then sometimes like vacation visit my 
my family, my dad, my bio- biological father that's out there. And, um, and then I think around one time I got into it, uh, I got into The Cure because I watched a documentary. Uh, and then I was like, oh, interesting. I said, when I come back, I'm going to start going and buying cassettes and things like that. You know, and then I got into one of my cousins would play the uh, air drums, and he he introduced me to Metallica and Iron Maiden. Oh, so that I was see. like my foundation. And when I came when I came out here, and then the whole hip hop thing was like completely new, which I also liked. So I already had both of those worlds kind of like instilled in me. You know? Wow. And what about your mom? What kind of music did your mom like listen she, to? She uh, she was into like. Boy, like, it was like I don't know how to say. It. Yeah, like yeah. Boy, that was like more like you know just singers and regular. Like she liked Spanish music, sure. typical Spanish salsa, merengue, and because uh, she liked it out here in yeah. Mexico, she was more like singing stuff. <laughs> like I don't know if you heard of this guy called Jose Jose Manuel. Uh, yeah, like yeah, there's yeah, this yeah, like yeah. guys that very romantic stuff, you know. <laughs> so uh, that's what she was into. I, I see. And oh, a lot of cumbia too. Cumbia. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. I like okay. cumbia. I grew up yeah. on that. Like with family get-togethers. Like I think out of the Spanish, all the Spanish music, I like cumbia the most. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I grew up with that, like uh, family gatherings in sure. Mexico, and even later. But being in the Bronx, then there was merengue, there was reggaeton. That, that was later, I guess. Right, salsa. Yeah, like, yeah, all that stuff. Yep. Like Leon's, Leon's grandfather used to listen to that stuff a lot too. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, and what about uh, like what do you remember eating growing up in the Bronx? Eating, yeah, uh, shoot. I mean, my mom would cook at home, whatever she knew from you know the typical Mexican stuff. And then the rest she would just explore, and she would learn from other people that she would meet. Yeah. And then she learned how to do like you know gandules, all that stuff too, like a lot of Puerto Rican dishes, sure. you know. And that's it. the rest was just even, or sometimes we'll go to restaurants, you know, yeah. food or fucking fast food, I guess. You know? Yeah, 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 for I don't sure. remember, yeah, but. But she like she liked to cook. She was into cooking. Yeah. Sure. She'll mix, she'll mix it up. She'll try to ex- experiment with whatever. Even, even spaghettis, like meatballs, you know. Yeah. Stuff like. That. Yeah. Yeah. And um, do you want to talk some about um, how you got into skateboarding and uh, you know your your early years skateboarding and all? Uh, yeah. That that was around that time when I was going to ice one seventy four. So I was in Mexico, like I said, because I would go back over there. And I met this kid that had a, <laughs> well, first I bought a cheap board that we used to call them tree boards, remember? Yeah. They were like a really, wooden, like they, they sold them at any like, they were like half inch thick. Yeah, they wood. sold them at like any, like maybe like, in a, I don't know where was this at, like mall? Toys R Us or, toys or, any, or something yeah. like that, yeah, I don't know, exactly. So I'm thinking get toys there. So, but it was like the cheap version, you know, like bootleg uh, skateboards, they yeah, weren't sure. real, you know? Sure. You know, they were just phony and you couldn't do anything with them. And then I met a kid in Mexico that had a pro professional board, like a Vision Streetwear or something like that. And I was like, and I saw his wheels, how they spun really good. And I was yeah. like, oh, man, that's the real deal, man. So, and I wrote it, you could tell. Yeah. So I promised that when I come back, because I was there for a year, remember, I said, when I come back to New York, uh, I'm going to I'm gonna buy a lot of music and I'm going to buy a legit ski. So that's around the time, I think Christmas, I bought my first board, a GNS board. Because I remember you probably got something around the same time that we went out and we got skateboards. So, yeah, it's a Santa Cruz or a GNS board. And that was my first board. You know, back then we didn't have anything, no reference yeah. to anything. You know, only the magazines if we could get a hands on one. Skateboarding. Yeah, or like maybe like a VHS of like yeah. everything was on the West Coast, nothing happened in the East Coast. Yeah. So we just, me and Liam, we just get together you know, and started cruising around, learning how to ollie. Whatever we could, if we met some kids around the area, that was pretty cool because there was some of them that were pretty good. Remember, remember that kid called Master? I think he used to tag Master. Oh uh, yeah. And he used to do like impossible. So there's like certain tricks that we were just like, whoa, we finally get to see this and it's real. Like it can, you know. You can do this. Sorry. So yeah. So then anyways, so that's how we got into it. I started like you know skating with Leon and in our narrow neighborhood. You know. I see. We can get into it, but I just wanted to mention something real quick. So exactly what he said about skating. There was a transition point that where it was it affected our music career correct, directly from skateboarding because a couple of friends that we met because they started skating on our ramps. Oh yeah, they were musicians, and 
we went to their house one day and they played Smells Like Teen Spirit in front of us. Um, and sh we were in shock. We were already trying to learn how to play guitar. Yeah. And we were in shock, like how professional or how put together they were. It was a full band and they played the whole, the whole song through and we were like, holy shit. And they basically showed us or I don't know if they showed us both, but they showed me. Or so Raymond and Walter? Raymond, yeah, oh. Raymond Walter. They showed me how to do a standard power chord. You know, wow. Guitar, and they yeah. said, you learn this power chord, you get comfortable with it. You can play practically anything you want by ear. Yeah. And the, the technical stuff comes later, but this is how you begin. And that just, it just set set us off, I think. Like, And then we were like skateboarding friends and music friends at the same time. Yeah, yeah. It, just, it kind of yeah so skateboarding kind of, kind of skateboarding pretty much right. led into the whole music thing wow. yeah meeting other friends that were into the music as well yeah and right. they actually knew how to play instruments because we didn't yeah you're right we didn't know, we how, know how, how to play, play. yeah we met those two dudes in in, uh, in, in stevenson was it stevenson or eyes once in a while out, out in the street like, oh, we, we realized that they went to school afterwards yeah yeah they don't uh, yeah they were the ones that i remember the first time yeah you're right that's what about kind of scene. catapulted wow. yeah, yeah, the music. Do you remember the? Did they? Did their band have a name? Do you remember the name of their band? Yeah, it was, yeah it, they were just jam out, but they were really jam out. They yeah. were really advanced. They were writing songs and shit. Yeah, and they had their like, studio. I bought up, my like, first like, symbol from a Raymond. Yeah, like just a symbol. Yeah. Wow, <laughs> because it was total different like level. Like yes, yeah. because I used to. I started out so after the skating, I, I started out and. and uh, I think when me and Leon started taking it more seriously after these guys, and we're like, oh man, it's, this is the way it should be. Mm -hmm. Like, let's take it that way. We used to go to a uh, boys and girls uh, club. Oh, sure, 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 sure. <laughs> so sure. boys and girls club the, was like the one hangout. on Hoe Avenue or a different yeah. one? It was... Uh, I'm trying to think if there would have been one closer to you than that one. It was... No, it wasn't on Hoe Avenue. It was actually also on White Plains Road. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, between, okay, okay. So it was in between both schools so in between the ISO 74 and the high school and it was kind of like the field across the street from the the track field of the high school oh, okay uh, okay okay high school. yeah yeah across the street from there. yeah so then I think around that time I was like this is the transition from skating into into the music I would go to Leon's house and this is a funny story that I would think back then Leon was rich and he knows this because uh, he had cable. He lived in a house with a second floor. And he had like a little, you know, small, like, I guess, like a uh, yard in the front, right? Yeah, yeah it's front like yard, side, backyard, a little yeah. basketball thing, you know? And I was like, whoa, this guy's got money, man. So I would go there and I was, I didn't have anything. We came here with nothing. Like, you know, I, my first Thanksgiving was on the floor. We had no furniture, yeah. no nothing. So I would go to his house and I was like, dude, you got cable, you got MTV. And let's yeah. and watch MTV, you know. That's how we started getting into the music and getting excited about it. And, uh, um, and, and then uh, we're like, let's go to, you know, we're just going to a boys and girls club. Yeah. But we didn't know that there was a guy that I was teaching that guitar, teaching right? Teaching guitar lessons. A funny guy that would play, uh, he ended up being, to me, to me, all those people were like cartoon characters. Yeah. It was like the Simpsons. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so, because remember, there was, right before you go inside a, a boys and girls club, there was uh, this ice cream truck. Okay. And me and Leon were oh, getting into right. the music, yeah. and we started wearing, the, you know, the shirts, the freaking, you know, Primus, Megadeth, Metallica <laughs> Slayer. The dude that was in this ice cream oh, truck, God. he reminded me of Otto. Is that his name, Otto? The guy that drives the freaking bus, the yellow so. bus? I think so. Simpsons? I think that's right. Yeah. Yeah. He's a metalhead. He yeah, 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 yeah. He yeah, kind of yeah, reminded yeah. me of like a spitting image. It's like it was yeah, just it was reality like, version of the <laughs> original. Yeah. And he would look at us because there wasn't that many metalheads. So people, kids, young kids listening. We're like 14, 15, yeah. maybe. We listen to this stuff. And he was like, you guys like that stuff? And we're like, yeah, man. And then I remember, I remember this. I don't know if you remember this. He cranked up. Uh, he had listened to something and he had Primus. Uh, sailing the seas of cheese. Uh -huh. It was yeah, uh, it was Jerry was yeah. a race car driver, and he was like, "You ever heard of this?" And I'm like, oh, yeah, man. And we're like, "What?" And he's like, "Don't worry, you're gonna get into it." And we're like, "Whoa, that's cool." <laughs> <laughs> and then so he kind of like was like cool with us. I guess I don't know if we even got we hooked up. Actually, actually, every time we go there, we're like, "Hey, what's up?" It's like, yeah, he was like, "What's up?" Cool. And then once me and Leon would hang out there in, in the boys and girls club, we found out there was like some guy was teaching, he was giving guitar lessons. And we joined in there, and it was like the most fucking. We took the classes maybe two or three times because it was just too. We couldn't take it serious. Yeah, yeah. 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 And I would like, you know, he'll he tell us what to do and he'll jazz do his, yeah, jazz, yeah. And he would do his licks. Yeah. But he 
you know when people are really into it, you're really into your playing, whatever, you make all these weird faces, and yep. you're like, what you're getting into it. <laughs> and it was just so, it was just so anti, like, anti is probably the wrong word, but it, was, it wasn't what we were expecting. Yeah, like, yeah, we wanted metal. We're like, what's, where's the metal? Rock, where's the course. heavy? Where's the rock? And yeah. he was like, doo -doo 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 -doo. <laughs> and he'll get into it, and me and Leon like, Oh, at, one point, <laughs> at one point, we started cracking up and we yeah, started yeah, laughing. Yeah. And he <laughs> thought it was because of the sound, the, the sound of the of his playing. Oh, yeah, it yeah. was a funny lick. Yeah, like yeah. it was like, oh, that, yeah, I can see how that lick was kind of funny. <laughs> it was the faces he would make. Oh yeah. So that was that's when we were like, kind of like, okay, I think we're not gonna do this. We gotta learn our own. Yeah. yeah. And then, being that I would go to his house all the time, we were beginning to get into the, the music and you know, watching videos and stuff. And uh, that's when I think I, I don't know if I told you, but we both kind of decided, it's like, dude, we gotta start a band, you know? Yeah, yeah, because you end up getting a drum set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, my, and my first drum, but my first drum set was a toy yeah, drum set. Yeah, that was a toy drum set. I had set. a toy yeah. drum set. Okay, okay. Like a freaking little tiny. And then from those dudes that I was skating with in school, one of them sold me a legit cymbal. Wow. And this is how poor and broke I was back then. Because <laughs> it was a toy drum set. It's bang, 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 sound like freaking cans. <laughs> and, uh, and I remember having the symbol. I don't know if you remember this. You put an umbrella. Yeah, like I, I didn't have a stand. Yeah. And I had an umbrella, like one of those pointy umbrellas. Yeah. So I would put the, I put the symbol on top, on the umbrella. I was like, how am I, how am I going to get it to stand up, you know? I think I got like bricks or like, or like books and everything. Just surrounded the whole thing with it. <laughs> and that was my only legit symbol. And it's like, dang, 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 that's it. Yeah, that was my first drum kit. And then Leon was supposed to keep doing the, uh, the, lessons, the lessons, but he never did, so he learned his own. I wanted to be a guitar player at that time, too, because you're young and you want to be, yeah. you know, and jump around and go crazy. It's like, I don't want to be in the back. But Leon was like, the stage yeah, but Leon was like, dude, you you have rhythm already. Just stick to playing drums. Like, all right, cool. I'll do it for a little, but you know, we'll see. Eventually, I want to get up there. You know, yeah. and be in the front. You know? Yeah, you know, he was singer. Came or he was a yeah. drummer. And meanwhile, yeah, drummer. after a while, it was just like, okay, I guess I'm the drummer. <laughs> yeah, but it was always just me and Leon. Those are the beginnings. That was the beginning. From skating to the meet to the to meeting some friends, watching videos, and you know, and then just learning on our own. Wow. So, Leon, I'm going to ask a, a lot more about you in a second, yeah. um, but. Just to finish off this phase until we get more into the development of rights reserved for you, Alex. Um, uh, you mentioned that you were already exposed to like Metallica and Iron Maiden. Um, uh, you know, I guess before you even came to the Bronx, right? Uh, or no, no it was in the no, year after when I was going back. To yeah, Mexico, when you're going you know, back. Yeah. Um, so, do you remember like the first like heavy? album that you got on your own you know whether bought or maybe got a copy from a friend or something yeah like that. It, it was probably when i was in i was living in my, I, I was living in mexico for like a year or oh, i think it was a vacation that would go like in the summer and, uh, <laughs> i had a cousin that would i don't know if you know this, i had a cousin that would wake up early and he was in his fucking tidy whiteies <laughs> and he he carved out uh some sticks made them look like drumsticks yeah and he would play, he would air drum to Injustice for All. Uh, and Iron okay. Maiden's seven, Seventh Son of the Seventh Son. Okay, which okay. Like fucking all time favorites of those two albums. And then because of that reason, because it's so embedded in my brain, I never forget that. So I would get up and I'm like, and he's in the living room, just like, and he knew everything. Yeah. Like he yeah. knew it. He, you know, he's playing along to it. And he's like, and I was like, what is this? And it was like, dude, you never heard of this? Like, what's wrong with you? It's like Metallica. And then he gave me the cassette. So he gave me Injustice for All, and he used to uh -huh. listen to uh, uh, Iron Maiden, especially that one, Seven Son of the Seven Son. And I was like, "Wow, man! Like this is definitely out there, like different from like the stuff that I've been hearing." You know? Yeah, the the regular pop music that was at the time, and uh, <clears throat> and then yeah, those were the two that got me into like the heavier stuff. And I was like, again, every time it's like when I come back, I'm gonna go. I used to go into record stores by myself or my parents. Yeah. And look for stuff, and if, and of course, my reference was always we would watch Headbangers Ball, and whatever came out there, it's like, oh, we like that, I like that, and then we'll go get the cassette or the CD, yeah. and the same thing goes for even that was later on, but it was eighty nine point five was the other one. That okay, was to help, you sure. Know, that we discovered a lot of shit, including right when around the time when the whole new metal came about, but that was, <laughs> that was later. Yeah, but those were two mine. Yeah, Metallica and Justice for All, Seven Sons, Seven Son, Iron Maiden, Metallica. Those were the two heavy stuff then later on i got into the slayers the megadeth you know all the stuff the thrash metal yeah you know but before that i gotta be <laughs> we 
we were into the cheesy metal. We were like really heavy into cheesy metal, you know, the sure. poison, sure. the slaughter, the hair bands. Yeah, because that, that's what that's what was on. Yeah, you know, it's like yeah. you, you first have to go through that in order yep. to get to the heavy. Yep. It's like you know, first uh, first floor, and then you want to go downstairs. That's where the shit is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> so what 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 record stores would you go to? Would you go to any in the Bronx? Damn, Do you remember? That's gonna be a tough one. I remember in the Bronx and Westchester Square, we used to go to this one place. It wasn't for music; it was more for the, the t-shirts, the bracelets, the skull oh, rings, things like yeah. that. Remember the the it was like it was like a small metal store. Wow. And we'd walk off of Westchester Avenue, that stop, oh, and like, yeah. and it was just. It was really. It was kind of like what uh, Hot Topic is now back then, oh, but shit, it was I more remember. geared towards metalheads. Wow! Like a small huh. shop. I, I wish I remember. And then there was it. one. I don't know if it was a record store or a music store in Castle Hill. Oh, yeah, there's Castle, yeah. Hill music. Castle Hill Music. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think everyone there, spoke huh? about this. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. A, a lot, lot of people spoke yeah. about Castle Hill yeah. Music. Yeah, I think yeah. I even took some uh, drum lessons there, which was the same thing. I was like, the guys uh, are teaching me. Do, 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 do. And I was like, dude, I don't know. I'm fucking rock. <laughs> <laughs> That's and also where the twist. bike shop was where they had the skate. Yeah, the bike. Yeah, uh, interesting enough, there was a bike shop which was where we used to go get our skate stuff there. Yeah, because they, they had a section of skating, and then you had yeah the, the music stuff. Wow. And I think we would buy. That's when we, we bought our early like cassettes. I see. Yeah. Uh, I see. I see. Um, I don't remember any. I, we were lucky to maybe get driven to a mall if they were something know, like that. coming to the city. Uh, one time I, at Times Square, actually, my parents would you know sometimes we drive out there and I like wander away and I'd go to because there was bigger record stores out there and yeah, I'd yeah, just yeah. go and go crazy and look for it. sometimes you know it was just about the covers of I mean, course you know, it was just like just covers yeah well we got to high school level that's when we started going to the city you know like uh, yeah. Tower, Tower Records and stuff like Tower that Tower Records yeah, Tower yeah, Tower yeah Tower things yeah, like that yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but those were yeah um, and uh, final question for the time before we uh, go to Leon but do you remember the first like hardcore um, song or, or band that you heard? Hardcore, nah. Yeah. Nah, uh, I think it was way later when we started going to the city. I and, see. And, and the uh, CBGBs had the mayonnaise. Yeah, sure, which sure, is sure. Cool because it's sixteen and up. Yeah. You know, I think around there, who the hell? Could have been? <coughs> that was that first heavy like hardcore band. I can't. I'm not sure. Ah oh, man, it sucks. Man. But rights reserved, you, you rights reserved was already like formed before before that. Or? No, we were just no. kind of like messing around. Just I think around, around that time we were calling up with different names. Uh -huh. Shell, Shell, yeah. We were just messing around in, in his house and I see. jam out like we weren't really a, a, a band. Yet. Okay. Like a legit, yeah. I see. And, I see. And we were just going to the city and explore. We we're fans, you know. That's, yeah, that's sure, cool. sure, sure, sure. Like, I've always been a fan to this day. Man. Yeah. Like, I fucking love being a fan of music. You know. We actually started off as more of alternative. Too, like we were into like yeah. the grunge band back of then. Of course, yeah, because yeah, 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 around that time, all, all that stuff was like around, changing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got, we got, in, we were like there when the whole new metal thing came about, like, the Corns, the Deftones, of course, and stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Even got to see them for like at Coney Island High for like five dollars. I remember. Wow. <laughs> I saw Corn for five dollars, and I saw Deftones for five dollars. I never forget that because I was like. Damn, that's crazy. And then boom, they blew up. Wow. That's but that's crazy. around the time when everything was, you know, the music was just evolving, you know, all the metal. <laughs> but the hardcore bands, we weren't so much into the, you know, you have the the, the early, early stuff, the agnostic front, you yeah. know, all that stuff, you know, that's more like punk hardcore. I guess yeah. You know, yeah, that's right. You know, we got more into like a little later when it got a little more groovier, you know, it that's had like right. more, more deathcore vibe. Yeah, the like deathcore that. stuff, yeah. Yeah. And of course, being fed from around, you know, the whole alternative stuff and also hip hop. That was that was literally me personally. I was I was a sponge man. Absolutely. I was a freaking sponge. I was just absorbing all of this music coming from all directions and you know, it was an awesome time to be around that stuff, you know, because yeah, it was hip hop, metal, alternative, rock, classic stuff, whatever, even more, you know, new wave and yeah. stuff like that, you know? Yeah. So that's when I was just getting all the absorbing it all as a sponge you know? so, yeah i'm a fan of this later on is when we start applying all the stuff that we knew into right to serve i what see it, what it turned to be yeah, right to serve. i see um <clears throat> all right so so leon um why don't you share some more about your family history and whatever you might know about you know what led your family to move to the bronx and all of that story sure 
Yeah. So I was born in Germany. My my father was born here. So my father was either born in the Bronx or Brooklyn. I always forget. I get him yeah. switched back and forth like crazy. Um, but at the time, my so my father was stationed in Germany via the army. So in Frankfurt, my mom was 100% German. They met. You know, we ended up coming to the Bronx. So we were we we're gonna go to the Bronx um, for vacation. Well, we went to the Bronx for vacation one one year because my my mom wanted to see how is it, how is Bronx, how is uh, the U.S. and stuff. She's never been. So we went. I think it was summer, if I'm not mistaken, um, of around '84, '85, and my mom at the time. Loved it. She had a great time. My grandparents lived in Bronx at the time, and we stayed for I think it was a few weeks or a month or so. Went back to Germany, and then just randomly one day, this is all I remember about it. It's crazy. One day, my father comes to my classroom in Germany. My dad's black, by the way, so <laughs> when my dad came to the classroom, which he never usually does, my teacher asked me. You know, it was a racist thing. Like, you know, this guy, like, she was hesitant to yeah. let me go with this guy. Yeah, sure. And uh, I was like, yeah, that's, that's my dad. He put, he was pulling me out of class because we were leaving to come to New York for good. And we were moving. My parents planned it all. They didn't tell us anything. Wow. Um, and I was nine going on ten, roughly. Like, we came around the same, the same time. Um, came to, you know, we flew to the Bronx. And, and the only thing I knew about the Bronx at the time was... It's dangerous. Yeah. You know, it's like my dad, my my mom used to warn us, oh, you can't do this, you can't do that. Like, they always, they always had that paranoid state of mind, like, you know, be careful. Um, so coming to the Bronx was a little scary. We didn't know what we were going to get killed. <laughs> coming yeah, yeah, off yeah. the plane or some <laughs> shit. Um, <clears throat> and we ended up uh, moving where I pretty much grew up uh, that area, Shorehaven, White Plains Road, they called it Little Puerto Rico. Um, and I had I moved into my grandparents' house, we all did. And they had enough room where we, you know, we all had our own space and stuff, which is awesome. The house at the time was only a one floor house. So when Alex was talking about the floor being <laughs> two stories, that actually happened because my parents my parents built the house up eventually when they took it over from my grandparents. So the, the, wow. they you know, grandparents sold it. My grandfather stayed with us for a while until he passed. Um, but we were like learning the ropes. My my neighbors at the time became my best friends. Um, there was a there was a, a guy there named uh, Joey. He was uh, the only friend I had for a while. But soon I realized there was other kids on the block, and we just just started having a great time and it was all about just playing outside nothing I didn't think of anything um, skateboarding or music or any of that stuff it was just being a kid yeah sure not too long after that um, funny enough my neighbors started getting into music you know early teens you start realizing there's music out there and you start loving it so we they were into um, you know, they were like DJs okay and so the house next door had two floors and there's two different families living there. And the other, another kid moved in, his name was TJ. And uh, they both started kind of hanging out and being deep, like, you know, um, spinning records and collecting yeah. records and all this stuff for, for a while. And they started appreciating it in a sense too and, and kind of getting into it, but I wasn't, you know, full blown into it. But at the same time, I was... <laughs> I was interested, so I started learning how to DJ a little. Okay. Started mixing records and stuff like that, I and that. yeah, and uh, <clears throat> they were trying to get me into it, but it was just a different vibe. But not too long after that, almost simultaneously, that's when I started meeting Alex and his stepbrother, and the whole skateboarding thing started happening, and it kind of started transitioning because before I got super heavy into DJing and um, you know. Freestyle, because that's the kind of music. Of course, of course. Stuff. Um, Alex, as a matter of fact, and his brother, his stepbrother, started introducing me to yeah, rock. Yeah, I should have said that. Uh, and, and said, yeah, because oh. 
I'm sorry, that's when we used to go to his house. Ah, yeah, and, 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 and we were like, yeah, there's this other stuff, you know, MTV. Yeah, Liam was more into, I think you were near Freestyle. Yeah, like I was. You went to your run DMC, Slick Rips, yeah. kind of like. Yeah, like I, I was, remember. I was open. Yeah. Like my mind was, as far as music, music was concerned, it was just like an open book. Yeah. Like I was ready to just, just absorb, right? My dad was, uh, I don't remember all the details, but he's, he, he did like, he had a kind of like a doo band. Oh, yeah, okay. So sang, Lead singer um, in a doo band. Yeah, wow, yeah. yeah that was all the rage back in yeah. like the 50s, yeah. 60s. He would, he would say to us later, he's like, you think I've never been to the village? I used to go there and yeah, yeah doo band. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. We were going to the East Village because uh-huh. like, that's the cool place to go right? to. Yeah. And uh, so my my dad used to do rock, uh, be a doo band. My mom loved like Motown and yeah. um, old 50s rock music and things like that but mostly it was Motown yeah like also anything you can think of Motown that's like I I had that like ingrained in my head so wow. like that was a lot there my dad used to know all the lyrics to uh, I can never remember the, the hip hop the most it was like what what put hip hop on the map it was like oh the, 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 the oh yeah, the Sugar Hill Gang yeah okay. the Sugar Hill Gang <laughs> yeah like, I was impressed. Like my dad would like Whoa, every single that. word, wow. he would sing it straight through. We used to have these like little talent shows in my house. We, my parents would put a lot of parties, house parties, wow. and, and we had these talent shows. Even before I met Alex, we would do it. Family would come over, yeah, and we'd just do these things. My father would do those performances, um, and that actually transitioned to us actually playing. Um, at my house and yeah. doing little wow. talent shows too. And it was, yeah, it we was were lucky fun. that we were able to always play in his, uh, in his house. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, his parents were really, really, really cool about it. So it was amazing that they were like encouraging to it. Like, cool, man. So it the, the love for the music that my parents had allowed me to kind of have that too. And they eventually allowed me to have a studio, like to <sighs> start building, I should say, building, yeah, to, yeah. like having my own equipment. Um, I started off in junior high school. I was in a senior band um, playing saxophone. Okay. So yeah, alto, alto saxophone, right? See, more Simpson stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually knew how to read and write music technically with do sax. Wow. And from junior high school to high school, I didn't really appreciate it because the high school band, I didn't feel was as dedicated or or good as the junior high school band. Something yeah. about the music teacher at the junior high school band was so much more, so much better, and I enjoyed it more. Going into high school, I didn't, and then at the same time, we already met. We were skateboarding, and like the whole rock music um, was introduced, and I started really liking that stuff, and I wanted to learn how to play guitar. So I remember my mom and grandfather took me to, I think it was Castle of Music, as a matter of fact. I think I remember because I remember even. Getting that guitar yeah. with you, I might have even went with you. That yeah. black guitar with the, yeah, exactly. with the, with the like, wooden neck. Yeah, like wow. I had a this, and, like, I had this yeah. it was kind of like an Ibanez imitation guitar. Okay, yeah, sure. I always went out of tune. And it was all, <laughs> <laughs> it was my first guitar, so it was it was awesome. I loved it, but at the same time, it was it was a shitty guitar. Um, but I sold my saxophone for that guitar. It was like a, if I remember, it was like hundred some dollars. Yeah, like that back then. Yeah. Um, but that that just set me off. At that point, it was just like yes, I'm. I'm going to play that's guitar. when I knew because he again me you know thinking I was like this guy's rich you can get a guitar you know, you know? <laughs> and I was like I'll go to uh, Toys R Us and get a toy drum set you know mm-hmm. and I did and then that's when I was like okay I guess he's going to be the guitar player and I'm going to be the drum yeah, yeah. with the toy drums so I like, played <laughs> so like wait later when I was 18 that's when I I, I finally got my first drum kit ah, but that's how it was so you had that one yeah, yeah that's that's like, so we we from there I kind of transitioned into like really starting to learn how to play guitar the skateboarding was always our priority like we loved skateboarding yeah. at the time and we used to skateboard every single day after school for hours until it got dark sometimes into the night and yeah. we were like just the two of us for a yeah. long time and then go and home and watch of, videos yeah watch MTV, MTV, when MTV it was, had been as well videos, yeah. at one point we were we were uh, watching Woodstock like Woodstock in my living room Remember, we were like, I don't know if you remember this. We were hanging out in the living room, had all our supplies, just put on MTV during the Woodstock. It was like a a weekend of Woodstock on MTV, and we were watching. Oh, the one in the 90s. Yeah, 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 yeah of course. Back to like, back to back yeah. videos. I remember Nine Inch Nails was playing, and it was like 
<laughs> we just like drenched out yeah. watching, you know, MTV and um, a lot of the metal, alternative, hard, heavy metal, um, uh, speed metal, uh -huh. all that stuff. I got introduced to it by Alex, his stepbrother. Yeah. Um, the alternative stuff, I think it was kind of collective. Like I think we, because of MTV, we started yeah, sure. listening to that stuff. You know, back then you had the in the in during the day you have the alternative and the, you know the mainstream yeah, stuff more poppy. And then you want to get more into the heavier, you have to wait for the headbangs. Yeah. Well. Or even later on, 120 minutes, which yeah, is yeah. amazing. Ah, yes, yes, whole yes. World too there, and um, yeah, that's how that's how. Mm -hmm. So we uh, we started kind of exploring and getting you yeah. know, branching out into those two two realms, and at some point the skateboarding started taking a backseat to the music. Uh, I you know, see. We, uh, and especially after we started meeting those friends that we mentioned, Raymond and Walter, who taught us how to actually play. Yeah. Um, we started getting instruments. Um, we were playing, like I would jam with his stepbrother. His stepbrother was, he was kind of savant. Like he, he, he was really good. Too. He was like a little prodigy or something. Yeah, he, he was already good. Yeah. Like, he, he played guitar? He played yeah. Guitar. He, he was already good bass. at it. I don't even know how. Yeah, skateboarding he was good at, like whatever he yeah. touched, he was good at. Yeah. So I used to be a little envious of that, and I remember he used to just pick up covers. Yeah. Like, it's no problem. Like he can just listen to music and just play it. And I used to, I really liked that, so I kind of started doing the same thing. I started trying to learn from other bands that I liked, right? Yeah. So we used to go to Castle Hill Music or and you get the you books, know, the books, yeah, uh, the yeah, tablature, the, the books. tablature, yep. Yeah. So I, that's how I learned really, that's when yeah. I really started learning how to play. And then I think that's when we were like kind of going like, okay, I guess we're, <laughs> we're going for it now. Cause he's learning that. So I was like, okay, I got to learn the songs too, you know? Uh -huh. So I would just, I would just, I learned everything by ear. You yeah. Know? yeah. Just watching videos, like watching different drummers, listening to the music. Mm -hmm. And again, a sponge always just grabbing a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, like all different styles. But one thing that's important too, that I, that I, that I want to say is that no matter what, I always, because of hip hop, I always kept my groove and my kind of funk right. in there, you know? So a lot of my rhythms have always been, like, that was, like, the root of it all. Absolutely. But then the heaviness came in. And, yeah. you know, later on, as, as we, so, as we progressed, we got heavier. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we, um, at one point, so I learned how to play, I want to say I would learn how to play guitar through alternative music. Sure. Yeah. Covers of alternative. So it was, like, it was Nirvana, Rage Against the Machine, Faith uh -huh. No More. Stumped up the pilots, like all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like that's how I kind of learned how to play. And then during that time, it was, it was funny because during that time, we were also listening to the heavier stuff, mm -hmm. the, the speed metal, the death metal. Like we we started listening to just stuff like uh, Exodus, yeah, uh, that thrash stuff, yeah, and Anthrax, like thrash music, Testament, yeah, yeah. Um, suicidal, suicidal, suicidal tendencies, tendencies for sure. Um, it was it was just a whole mess of like it was just like. You can't get enough. Yeah. You know, yeah, like we're listening to everything we could possibly get our hands on, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it was just an appreciation of like different styles and techniques, and like how does this person play this so fast yeah, yeah. and good, or how is this so melodic? Like it just you know this hits you in the heart, you know things like that. Absolutely. So we because of that, I think that had a lot to do with our style, Rage Reserve, because we just started like <laughs> trying to blend all the yeah. music together uh -huh. you know? it was like we're just like add this add that a little bit of that because one yeah. thing that that should be said yeah, that you know uh, we were never like as heavy and brutal as all the other guys yeah. from the Bronx sure you know mm -hmm. they're amazing at what they do. so because of that reason all the stuff that how we were growing up and listening to different stuff we just kind of put in a little bit of this a little bit of that you know mm -hmm. making our own formula of what was gonna eventually be right to serve Absolutely. So we were never so heavy, brutal, but we have a lot of elements of that. You know, Absolutely. And and part, of, stuff. part of the reason of that, so when I when I was learning how to play guitar, I liked the alternative stuff. But, like, I'll give you an example. So, like, Mike McCready from Pearl Jam, he had, I think it was a Stratocaster, if I'm not mistaken, at the time. Um, he would play, his. the sound of his guitar was more like a light. It was like, you know, but he was really good at what he did, but it didn't have this, like, meaty crunch to it that yeah. like all these other bands like Pantera for example of course the guitar of you know that sound is just like wow so what I ended up doing is like finally sold my my shitty black guitar for a, a Gibson Les Paul 
but the Gibson Les Paul, I knew like it was a solid body, so it had like a more deeper tone to it. Yeah. But it still wasn't too. I wasn't happy with that. I wanted it to be even more crunchy. Uh huh. So I took my Gibson Les Paul to Castle Hill Music, and I changed all the, the pickups. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And I took off the pick guard because I thought that wasn't cool. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So I wanted it to be like you know a, a, a raunchy, raunchy, like yeah. rough, crunchy guitar or whatever. And it, I, I ended up buying big Marshall cabinet. I like got, yeah. uh, you know, it just, ex- you know, exceeded from there. It was like just more, I just needed more depth. But we didn't want to be, we didn't want to play just pure heavy music. Sure, sure. We wanted that like real crunchy sound. We wanted to have like that real nice rhythm going and stuff yeah. like that and have a groove. A lot of the metal. Like melodic stuff too. Melodic, you know, yeah, melodic rhythm, stuff too, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, and during that time, that's when we also started listening to Korn and Deftones. Uh-huh, so it was like yeah. the appreciation of not just playing simple chords or simple solos yeah became i like the way he made that weird sound on the guitar yeah, yes was that, or whatever how did he do that you know how did he do the the harmonics like yeah where is that coming from so i kind of like started trying to focus more in doing some weird creative stuff with guitar along with the yeah know, and the i was I, I was there a par with you doing the same thing with the drums because yeah. i always hear like like you know the the classic uh you know Alice in Chains, Pro Jams, like the drummers from there. Yes. Know? Like David Brucey's, he was really smooth at playing the drums. And he's kind of groovy. He's actually really funky. I think he used to be like in a funk band before. Yeah. yeah. So he had, he was amazing at playing. He's one of my first big influences. But at the same time, it's like, I want to do that, but like in a heavier version. Uh-huh. So it's like, again, yeah, it was like, you know, grabbing a little bit from everything. You know, it's like the heavier stuff, the yeah. alternative, the grunge, the a good, whatever it is. A, a good band that gave us that influence a lot in that, in that respect yeah. is Helmet. Yeah, helmet. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. And faith no more. Of yeah, course. Faith, faith no more. Faith no more for me was like the the band that just broke everything. Like made me just see like a bigger spectrum of, uh, of music. You know, yeah, that first that album, which by the way just turned like thirty five years old. I, I know, it's crazy. crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, yeah, that one. That's when I knew. I think because I remember having this conversation that I was like, dude, this is the way we got to be like you know versatile. Like, yeah, different. Now. If you listen to a lot of faith no more, it's like not everything's the same. Yeah. That's but right. they had elements of heavy stuff and it yeah. was just everything, you know. It would be I would just chill, jazzy. I was talking to my wife or the other day I surprised my wife because she she's not really into metal or anything, but I put on zombie eaters. My kids so I have two kids. My kids are um, four and seven right now. And not too long ago, maybe a few months ago, I put on zombie eaters from Faith and More. And yeah, it's kinda like Right, and, uh, that's yeah. That's a, no, that, no, no, that's so, surprised you're dead. Yeah, zombie eater starts off with slow. a ballad, and, yeah, then, yeah. It gets oh, and yeah, then it gets heavy yeah. at the end. So, the music though is about I don't know if you know what zombie eater is about, but it's about baby's first pers- uh, pers- the perspective of a baby, yeah, like you know, telling uh, of, with the experience of a mom of what the, was the, what the baby's doing to the mom, yes, yes. right? <laughs> so, when, <laughs> when I put it on, my wife was like, What is this? Is this appropriate for the kids? Because I don't play a lot of metal around yeah, the kids because sure. they're too young for certain things, right? And I'm like, just listen to the music, listen to it, and I'll 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 sing along to the music. I'll sing along with the lyrics. But I know lyrics pretty well, and then you'll see. And totally shocked, like, <laughs> like this is crazy. Like, how does this make any sense? So she has a new respect for certain things now. That's funny. Of that. but, yeah, yeah, but I think Faith and More is definitely like a blueprint of knowing that you could be different. You don't have to be. A certain, a certain just like thrash, or yeah. hardcore, just a, you know, a, just a certain genre. Of music. That's right. So, ironically that's enough, that's how. We, just, um, what's a uh, Pantera singer named uh, Phil? Phil and Selma, yeah. yeah. Him and Mike Patton from Faith No More. They, <laughs> we were heavily into them. They both had similar hairstyles. Oh they yeah, shaved their head up to here think... with a long ass <laughs> mohawk. Yeah, thought they were the same person. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, so, <laughs> being a vain, you know, teenagers at the time, we were like, "That is so freaking cool." And I remember we used to cut a hair similar to that, <laughs> and our hair wasn't quite the same. Yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. I had this like big ass poof of hair coming from the top yeah, of my yeah, head. Yeah, yeah. And I would always wear a hat because my hair would just go like this instead of. <laughs> yeah, we have yeah. thick hair, and then it, yeah. and then we had the genius idea of uh, oh, why don't we use oh, relaxer? relaxer? Oh, we damn! Went that far. <laughs> we went that far. Yeah, it was just like it's embarrassing, but whatever. It's funny, man. Like, 
we we went that far to try to like you know ha- like because we wanted so a headbang cool. yeah of course we headbang and like we rock you know rockers and stuff and <laughs> we were we realized obviously like like well, what are we doing this is stupid mm-hmm. but at the same time we're like still skating and just yeah, yeah, yeah. wearing these like Jenko pants or whatever, oh, you know those. Remember the oh, Jankos? I remember the we had right? that many Jenko pants. We didn't, but that we did. Yeah, we, baggy, we had we had baggy, baggy stuff. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back then, skateboarding was more about the baggy, and yeah, then yeah. like it transitioned to yeah, more yeah. tight. You yeah, know, that's right. Like, but uh, yeah, we we kind of went through those little um, avenues of our our image yeah. and stuff like that. That was definitely the inception of all. I listened to all this music, uh-huh. and then. Now we're getting ready to be like, okay, well, how are we going to write and stuff? You know? yeah. I yeah. see. I yeah. see. Um, yeah. And we were just called, I think we were called Shell. Remember that was Shell? the first name that yeah, you all had? Okay, Shell. Shell. And then Neck. And neck. Yeah. And then we couldn't use Neck because mm-hmm. the band, there was another, another band named yeah. Neck in the heart in a more heavier scene. Yeah. And they were already established and respected the music because they're really good. Well, and, I have a story of that real quick. Yeah. I was at Coney Island High one time with Manny. You weren't there. Okay. And I saw this guy in the, in the crowd with a T-shirt that looked like the... I wonder if this shirt exists. Someone should have it. It was a neck from that band, but I didn't know that was the band. And it looked like the Pringles guy. You know, the uh-huh, Pringles? Uh-huh. He, I think he used to wear like a bow, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, in the bow, it said neck. And it was really cool. It was like the Pringle face, you know, and, and, and yeah. it, the neck that's supposed to be a bow, it said neck in there. Nice. And I was telling Manny, I was like, dude, what the hell? Like, you know, that's not, that's okay, Manny. That's not us. And I think I asked the guy, I was like, he was like, yeah, this is a man. And I forgot where they're from. I think they're from a city from uh, Manhattan, maybe. Yeah, I don't it might have been you who said that. And I was like, like what? Neck I was like, okay, it's over. And wow. Then, yeah. And then from there, we had to come yeah. up. With it. We tried for a little while. Like, we wanted to make sure there was an actual yeah. band called Neck exactly. out there. So, yeah. And once we found out, yeah, because so we heard the music and everything, then we we're like, yeah, we gotta, gotta the, change. It. Yeah, because there was a time when we were like, go out and like even tag, we yeah. tag neck. Yeah. Oh, Remember Malik, okay. Malik would fucking tag everywhere, like yeah. neck, Bronx hardcore. Wow. Like, oh, yeah, he's like fucking. Meanwhile, neck. he's advertising for another band. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. He really do that. That's funny. Yeah. Wow, wow. So, um, now before we get more into you know shell neck rights reserved, um, Leon, do you remember? Uh, the first like heavier album that you got on your own? Yeah, so after the whole, I used to buy freestyle albums, DJ. <laughs> I'm not going to talk about those. But oh, you could. Thing, I mean, that's... that's I, don't even know that. I don't even remember the name, I'll be honest. With you. There's one like Sh- Cherry. So, I don't remember. It was oh. just like, I remember like a, a mouth with the cherry in it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've you seen know, that. I've seen I that album cover the before. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't remember it either. And, but. but that was like literally the only album I bought when I was DJing and I realized I didn't really get into it. And I got a lot of albums because my parents had tons of vinyl. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that was, it didn't go anywhere. My The first, I remember the first cassette, first full cassette that I ever had was um, uh, Metallica and Justice World. Oh, uh, okay, 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 and, okay. And, like, so you I share that. Yeah. yeah. And I remember, yeah. and it was because of them. Again, uh-huh. like he introduced there, me to the lot. Of music. There was a point where we both would chip in. We'll do the whole, hey, let's go to the store, let's get this cassette. Yeah. And, we'll and then copies. one of us would dub it. Yeah. Yep. yeah. yeah. We'll copy. Yeah. And, we'll... and there was, I think, if I'm not mistaken, it was either during that time or right after that time when I was introduced to to that album. We used to go to the beach a lot, like almost every Saturday, or every couple of Saturdays or whatever, with my family. And I remember having this like radio. It's like this big yeah, yeah. With a big ass handle cassette player radio yeah, and uh-huh. I just bring it to the beach plop it on the beach yeah. it had like the battery and the C batteries whatever and I would we would play that album back to back to back yeah, wow. and Metallica on the beach imagine that and what, what beach? Orchard, 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 Orchard Beach Orchard okay beach. I was gonna ask you Orchard Beach yeah which I'm sure you heard of the whole probably yeah. Yeah. yeah and then back then there was just, you know it's like rare to hear like people listen to metal you know like, yeah. like simple shit to the metal <laughs> So, yeah, that was my first album. Then after that, forget about it. Like I, I was like a, a I w- it felt like a magnet to music. I used to buy these, uh, you know, those cassette holders, like a hold a hundred, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. cassettes. Yeah, I had like two of them at one point, completely filled. Um, wow! I actually gave it my leftovers just recently. Like, yeah, just recently, not too long. Which ago. I have a lot yeah. of everyone's uh, uh, demos, like from oh, Gordon Mantis, wow. Driven by Hatred, yeah. uh, all the bands, you know, wow. like, Four in the Chamber, like you know. I think Billy Club, I rate. Yeah. I, I, don't know if I, I started yeah. dedicating like one one holder to all like actual like 
fans that are established. Yeah. And the other one to all the BDC bands, wow. all the demo tapes you get from shows yeah. and all this stuff. So it was like a separate thing. And even our songs, all the recorded four track tapes that we recorded, I would put them in there and stuff wow. like that. For the whole separate, you know, category of music. I was like but it was it was amazing. Just starting to collect all that stuff and Yeah. And wow. Cool. That's awesome. Now um uh do, this is a question for both of you before we get more into Rice Reserve, but do you remember the first um, uh, like concert or show that you went to and what it was? Dude, I think I actually remember. I was thinking about it. Um, you're not going to remember, probably. Maybe you would. I know it's it Roseland, but I don't know. No, no, no. It was even before. Do you remember? It was like a talent show. Okay. At, it at Stevenson? Stevenson? It wasn't oh, okay. Stevenson. It was another school. Was it at Lehman? This band called Aggressor. Oh, Lehman, yeah. Lehman High Lehman. School. It was, probably. Oh, yes. Aggressor. Yeah. It was a band called... Because they did talent shows there on a regular basis. You know, yeah. Every year, I and think. I don't know yeah, how we know it. Maybe when we met these two guys, Raymond and, Wal and Walter, they, they were yeah, kind of like, we were ready. And yeah. they maybe like took us out there and we're like, oh, shit. And it was, i never forget, that was, that might have been maybe my first heavy band that I ever witnessed, like in oh, the Bronx. Oh, Aggressor. It was at Lehman High School. Yeah, it was a, a, a talent show. Or yeah. it wasn't a or was it a contest because I remember everybody screaming. Oh, it was like a bat, it was a battle battle, battle of the bands. Yeah, 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 that's yeah. what they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, it was that was the band that I remember. That was literally yeah, a legit yeah, first yeah. show ever. That's true. Wow. wow. When it comes to in the Bronx in that area. Yeah. Then for me personally, I went to. Uh, I was already probably like fifteen, and I I knew I wanted to go to a concert, and when I got lucky that I was like, holy moly! It was like Faith No More with the Angel Dust album on that tour and Helmet was open enough for them oh, and I shit. was already kind of like deep into them and I was no, like I oh I, man I, think I, went to that I don't know too. if you went did you? I don't know where we Manny so we saw Helmet and Fake more together for sure oh, okay I so then and, and I remember I think I told Manny and I was like I was like hey if you want to go because that's why I don't know if you went because yeah, I, I sure. told Manny because my stepdad drove us over there oh, yeah, it was at Roseland oh okay and I was like I was determined to go no matter what by myself I don't care you know yeah. but Manny was like okay I'll, I'll come along and um Sure enough, yeah, we got dropped off. You know, we were young, and it was Helmet on the on the Meantime album tour, and 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 uh, Faith No More on the Angel Dust, and it was that just was like, wow, this is it, man. This is like the dopest shit ever, you know. Wow. To see those two bands together at Roseland, yeah. And funny enough, we got lucky. I don't know how, but Manny gets hit in the head with the drumstick <laughs> from uh, Mike Gordon, <laughs> and I think he had one. And obviously, he probably doesn't have it anymore. But he, Grab one. It's a like, dude. I got stick. Wow. And that was my first concert. So it was Aggressor in the Bronx that I remember. Yeah. And then Faith and More Helmet. Yeah. Then from there on, that's a bunch. You know, that, yeah. that was the beginning. I, I was wish like I opening could, the doors. And I wish I could tell you what my first concert was like outside of that. Yeah. And I let you remind me because I don't even know that. I don't remember. Like it's all a blur because there's so many concerts we used to go to, and you I really don't CBs remember. The, no, like yeah, it was CBs was after we were. Yeah, yeah, kind yeah. Of, yeah like, that was later, huh? Uh, yeah. Like, so one thing that I remember that I used to do, and it, it was always go to the village, pick up uh, the village voice. Yeah. yeah. And in the back of the village voice, on. you see all the all the venues. Yes, yeah, sure. And I, would, and I would just be like, oh, shit, this band's playing. I would let him know that uh, uh, Manny, whoever it was at the time that we were rolling with, you know. Yeah. So it was like, dude, this band's playing. Oh, shit, let's get our tickets, you know. And then we had to go get Ticketmaster stuff. You know? <laughs> Back when it was like, cool. That's, cool. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I definitely remember going to like so we did go to a lot of shows because yeah. of that we're just like no and you know we're lucky to be in New York man yeah, it, yeah, yeah, all yeah. the bands had to come through here you know just to all of a few shows I would say like Pantera Fate yeah Pantera Fate and More Helmet uh, definitely uh, Megadeth Megadeth Anthrax Anthrax, yeah. Anthrax. So Anthrax oh, yeah. we saw Anthrax with Deftones yeah yeah yeah, yeah. oh that was at uh, the Ritz maybe yeah the Ritz yeah, what the would Ritz, that have yeah. been like 90 yeah. 394 something like that or yeah maybe right around about, yeah, yeah. Like mid to late quicksand have you heard of quicksand oh yeah quicksand, quicksand. Was the band that was just coming they're, out of they're that bass whole players from the Bronx Park actually Park. oh yeah 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 Sergio yeah yeah, yeah Sergio yeah. that used to play in Deftones for a little bit yep too. that's yeah. right that's yeah right. quicksand was coming out of that whole like hardcore scene you know? absolutely you know they like post hardcore they call it yeah, too. Quicksand was open enough for, uh, oh, it was White Zombie. It was Quicksand, yeah. oh. White Zombie, and Anthrax. And that was at wow. Fritz and Rosemary. that's an interesting yep. show, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we got to see, yeah, I, we, we absorbed it all, man. And it, Bung, uh, Mr. Yeah. Bungle was another huge influence on us. Uh -huh. I saw Mr. Bungle every time I came because that was Mike Pence from yeah. his band. So it was like any of that stuff. Uh, System it, of a Down, I used to be really into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. System of a Down still, yeah. 
probably aside from Faith No More, like my all time favorite band, System of Down is probably in second. Yeah. Sure. For Tool, me, we got to see early Tool, we got to see early Rage, like wow. all the stuff that early back then. You know? So yeah. we got all those. Then we started going into the CBGB's uh, uh, shows, which is when we started discovering bands. Like, you know, we're just going there randomly. Of like, course, yeah. And we're like, oh, let's yeah, see what's going so on. There was like a Tuesday or Wednesday night or something yeah. like this that we were in the village just hanging out and we were like, let's go, let's go to CB, see what's up. <laughs> we ended up seeing this band, we never heard of it, and it was the headliner band and they were, they were named Toadies. Yeah, I mean, Toadies. I'm sure you heard of it. They got kind of big. They were like alternative. It was like okay, an okay. It, Long story short, that night when we saw them, the entire place was just like super into them, and like the place just got up. The vibe was amazing. Yeah. It was, it was like uplifting and fun. It wasn't like you know something. It wasn't something we were used to. It was a different style of music. Yeah, it was, sure. It was very just different alternative, I guess you could yeah, say. Yeah, yeah. Um, but not too long after that performance, and it was so random. We're like, oh, that, that sounded pretty cool. Yeah. Maybe a week, a month, not too long after. They were like all over MTV. Yeah, wow. they just blew up, and wow. it was just like it was kind of like a one-hit wonder in a sense because they only it was only that album or those one or two songs that they got yeah. really popular, and then they just kind of faded away. And that's kind of how we knew. Also, it's like, dude, you got to start coming out here more often. Wow. Like, we'll discover bands that are about to blow up. You know, it was wow. also one of the reasons we why we, were like, we got a, our goal is to play CDs because we're like, yeah. maybe we can do the same. You absolutely, know? Like, absolutely. You know. Um, do you remember, uh, aside from Aggressor and um, the kids that y'all skateboarded with, do you remember um, like some of the other er, like early Bronx bands that you heard or met while you all were starting to jam? Oh, I, I, here's gonna here's where I'm gonna tie it all up. Okay, but, yeah, 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 let's hear. Because because uh, I heard the the Go to Mantis one. Because uh, well, I've been hearing a lot about the Malali stuff, which yes. we used to go to Malali, but to actually skate, yeah. Yeah. we missed out on the concerts on the shows. So yeah, we didn't know anybody. yeah, yeah, sure. You know, so I know Will from Blackout. They, I think they even got to play. Right? They did at yeah. one of yeah. them. I don't know, but that's around the time. Yeah, the, the bands that we heard. Um, I don't know. It was it was mainly through going, uh, like Ramon said, to the to the parties, house parties, uh, the house parties. Yeah. So there was that famous, infamous one that that I think this girl. Uh, Gigi Mari. I don't know if it was Gigi Mari yet, but this girl that had a party in, in her house. And oh, yeah. It was in the living room. Yeah. I, think, I think, um, think it was a Valentine's Valentine. party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. That's yeah, the one yeah, we're yeah, most yeah. talking about. It's like, oh, yep. yeah, that's right. I think that's one of the first times that we realized that I went there and I met Frankie and uh, I met Ramon. Uh, yeah. And I was like, oh, oh shit. shit. Like, this is going to be fun. There. Like, what's going on here, right? Yeah. But Frankie, Frankie's amazing. I love Frankie. Yeah. Yeah. Especially as a drummer. Like, he's... He was already like I thought he was the most advanced drummer back then, and he started jamming out with Ramon. I think they were just jamming, not even yeah. playing on the show, yeah. or maybe they played it later because my mind is like foggy now. Sure. But um, he was playing like Punishment, I think, by Biohazard yeah. with Ramon, and then they were doing uh, Territory by Sepultura. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or oh, I don't. Yeah. And I was just like, What the hell, man? Like, wow. This is awesome. Dude. And we were just like, Dude, like you know, we we're like. New here, we know anybody. We didn't know if people were gonna like our stuff. Yeah, I don't know if we were rights reserved by then. Man. Yeah, uh -huh. I didn't think we were. That's when we yeah, because we played. Yeah, play. we were covering at the time. We were covering corn. Oh, yeah, okay, like, okay, you know, okay, okay. Yeah, songs, yeah. But that's when <laughs> the time when we met them, and then I think that was the beginning of uh, you know getting introduced yeah. to all the other bands. Uh, I yeah. see. We played a house party actually once because um, it was kind of set up that way through the same friends, yeah. Ramon, Gigi, all of them, and we played. I forgot exactly where, but it was an apartment inside of a building on like this sixth or seventh floor, or whatever. And we played uh, "Blind" from Corn. That's oh we, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we didn't we didn't have a singer, so <laughs> we just played the music. And then everyone, like other people, like everyone, all our friends and stuff, were singing "Fill In." And no one knew what we were gonna do. We just started doing the you know the symbol thing, ding, 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 uh -huh. and it like. The entire apartment erupted. Like everybody appreciated it, and at the same time, it like we're all different styles, different uh, genres of music in a sense. Yeah, yeah. But it was so commercialized, but so heavy at the same time that yeah. just everyone could just appreciate it. So we, when we played it, it was just that it was. Damn, I don't remember. Man. It was an amazing feeling because we played it, and then everyone started moshing and like jumping yeah. all over the place in the apartment, and we just like it, from there we we. We stopped playing and everyone just having a good time, you know, drinking. I, yeah, I always thought it was pretty cool that that when we discovered like 
I don't know if Ramon was in Golden Mantis then or not, but uh, sure. but he they were like heavier, of course. Yeah, I was like, oh, there's heavy bands over here. We knew we weren't that heavy. Yeah, sure, sure. You know, but it was cool. Like Leon yeah. said, like we could play all these songs that you know they were more mainstream, but people were like, oh, that's cool, man. Yeah. You, know, you guys are doing it too. You're doing stuff. So it felt good, you know, like okay, like we're kind of accepted, yeah. you know. <laughs> but those are those apartment um, shows, I want to call them, or whatever. Yeah, those yeah. Times were, when we started branching out and meeting other people in the Bronx, is what kind of connected us, started connecting us to the other Bronx metal mm-hmm. bands and yeah. like friendships. Like that was the beginning. That's, like Gigi um, mm-hmm. at the time was really connected to a lot of the other. Will I think Will and Blackout? Will, Blackout was another band. Yo, oh, yeah. we used to play at this place. Ramon knows this one, I think too. Uh, we played at this place in Hunts Point. Okay, there yeah. was this kid named Javier. Remember? Yeah, yeah. and he lived there with his mom. Like he, I think. Uh, and this is Hunts Point when I was like, you know, grimy man. Yeah, like, yeah. Ninety. Two ninety three, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, then, sure. So we would go there and have parties there. That was like yeah. the hub where, like, I think a lot of us met. That's when we first played with Blackout. Yeah, with oh, Blackout. Oh, I and see. And then we played with, uh, and I think that's where we met Gigi, Mari, his uh, sister, which Mari used to be in food. That's right. Also. Yeah, the singer, Ramon. Right? We were already kind of like friends with Ramon, so you know, and other people. And then, yeah, that was the spot where a lot of bands would play, and it was a crazy, it was crazy times because we're in the hood, you know, and yeah. we're playing this heavy music and. I think I think uh, someone like there's a lot of kids in there that will hang out and like they stole something from uh, from uh, from the apartment. You know? yeah. Yeah, so yeah. many dudes would go in there, like people would just walk in there. Oh, it's a free party. Let's go in there, you know. And uh, and I think they were intrigued by the fact that it's like we oh, got some playing heavy stuff, you know. But at the same time, they didn't understand it. They're like, yeah. we're just here to fucking drink, you know, party and whatever. They took shit. From there. <laughs> I but, I uh, think that's the the place where Ramon said like after one or two shows. There were people who just like squatted in that. Yeah, house yeah, for, like, yeah. A month or two months. Literally, <laughs> yeah, yeah. This guy have your one. Let people was crash. Yeah. yeah, I would go to the bathroom. It was like three squatters, like punk kids, like laying there. Like, what the hell's going on here, man? I passed out a bunch of times. I mean, this is the times of like. Yeah. I remember sleeping on a table. Yeah, like, yeah. Literally on the top yeah. of the table with nothing because yeah. we're all so like just. It was like those times where everybody would just wake up and you're like, what? You know, I mean, it was all 40s and blunts, you know, uh-huh, that's all uh-huh. it was there, sure. and music and good sure. vibes, you know. That was cool too, to that. There was never, never any like crazy shit going on, yeah. you know, except for mine as the thugs that would walk in there and take right, shit stuff. or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, that was, a, that was a place where everybody would pass out. And I remember, yeah, that's meeting, you know, that's where we met all these people. This is even before the BDC, right? It's just, just yeah, so meeting all the bands. Yeah. Kind of almost going into that like we because of that and i don't remember who who invited us or who put us on the show but we ended up being on this it was the pre-bdc era show at all that's when i rate billy club sandwich um right you deserve it was uh the the punk rock band uh, the wasted the wasted the wasted wasted. yeah 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 Yeah, and it was black and blackout blackout yeah um if you want to they're driven by hatred. Driven by yeah. hatred, for uh-huh. sure. Yeah, and and I know there was maybe two or three other bands. Yeah, and they did a. It was like a, somebody's backyard, and it was like oh, a stage. Okay, it was okay. like a stage setup back there. It was like it was kind of like on a patio, but it, they set it yeah. up like a stage. Uh huh. And that was amazing. It's like they made it. It became this like castle, castle heights, hardcore show. I forgot what how they advertised it, but they hit flyers and all the stuff yeah. for it. And it was it was amazing. That's kind of like for me. That's the start of the BDC. That's when BDC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Started. I see. I that's think that's when, when all con- really I think that's when everybody knew that it was like, oh, there's more people in the Bronx doing yeah. this kind of stuff. Yeah, you know, doing yeah. music and different styles too. And know? all different styles. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was like the entire Bronx. It wasn't just like you know. Uh, Maybe it might have been some. It might have been some Queens bands. I don't know. Like, you know, like people are from Queens, but it's yeah. like yeah. But that's when we knew we were like, oh. We're not, we're not the only ones. Uh huh. There's other people out there. Yeah. You know? And after that, if I'm not mistaken, so like time frame is like hard for me to remember on this part, but so at one point, Rights Reserve kind of fully established. It was uh, Alex, me, Manny, and Malik. Malik. And Malik. Malik was a singer, bass player. Yeah. I see. And we did uh, a show in Mount Vernon with that rate and Billy Club Sandwich, and that's on that's probably still on YouTube to this day. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. I don't know. The, where, where he got completely wasted. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I think it was Go to Mantis, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Go to Mantis was it, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. It, we did that, but um, what ended up happening is, like, 
there was a transition period where Malik, we got uh, Manny from Driven by Hatred. Yeah. He played bass for us for a while. Okay. Um, then uh, Will from Blackout played with us for a while. Yeah, for bass, a while. Too, right? yeah, yeah. Um, towards the latter part of Right to Zero. Yeah. We had another singer, Malik, um, wasn't in the band after, like, towards the end of it. I think so, maybe when well, Malik was in Golden because Malik was in Golden Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, yeah. was focusing more on that. And then we got a, a friend of mine, uh, David. Dave. Yeah, Dave. Dave was singing, yeah. But that was, like, towards the end of Right to Zero, and he kind of just went on yeah. separate ways after that. But, like, for a while, they, uh, Manny was a great part of the band when he used to play bass for us and stuff. Yeah. And we would we would jam again in my, in my house or in my apartment. Um, had a studio yeah. set up. So every weekend, we would be in my apartment for yeah. the entire weekend from Friday night to Sunday night yeah. just getting wasted that was, playing uh, PlayStation, PlayStation and Xbox yeah, yeah. and drinking smoking, smoking and just yeah. playing music the uh-huh. entire damn time and whoever would come like well, all our friends were in music so yeah. whoever was there we all they just could come and hang out watch playing, just, wow yeah, yeah, it was cool. yeah that's around the time when the BDC was definitely going on because I would think I think at a certain point I didn't know it was real but yeah. Leon was like you would know more you could speak on that because you would go to the meetings right oh yeah yeah i don't think i don't think i ever went to like meeting. once a month or something like that yeah, or, yeah. yeah we had it at one of the meetings i don't know if it was more than one but definitely in the apartment in my apartment with the studio we had right. oh okay i just never knew. i was like this is real like what the hell really yeah. like i didn't yeah. know but then when he started going to the meetings i was like i guess it's legit and yeah then, yeah and then when he told me the whole thing uh you know i thought it was amazing because it's it's awesome it's like everybody just helping each other out you know like it was all about like if someone would get a gig at say uh, at somewhere in Queens or Manhattan, wherever, they would like let the promoters know like, hey, I got other guys, other bands that can play with us, and Absolutely. it was part of the BDC, and we'll do the same, you know. It's like, yeah. hey, we got our boys that can play with us, so you know. P- part of that, what he what, what he's speaking of is like there was a dark part of that too, because I remember at that specific meeting that we were talking about, um, it was also kind of to establish what are we trying to achieve here i see there was like differences of opinions okay so some people felt like they wanted to keep it under wraps or keep it a cool thing some people felt like i know i want to make it i want to be a fucking rock star i want to be like top notch and there was because of that personality difference there was a little bit of a tension thing going on um which you know it's understandable there's a lot of people a lot of opinions a lot of bands but uh it it kind of made the BDC kind of a little shaky. I you see. Know? Like there was some things there that certain bands felt like we should only, we're only going to succeed if we put together a show that's all similar bands. Other bands thought, no, it should be a, a whole mix of bands because you draw more people. Yeah. You know, so it was just like, there was definitely differences there. And, and I don't think we ever really truly figured, figured out, figured that part out. Like I how to see. go about that, you know? Because it could have been this amazing thing where you just put together these huge shows or whatever, but how do you do it without proper leadership, organization, whatever? There's somebody has to really take control, and I don't think, out of all the people there, I don't think there was really anybody truly ready. To, yeah, to we were too that young to win knuckleheads and everything. Yeah. Like but <laughs> but it, it was it was truly it was amazing. It was really something that brought all those bands and all friendships together. Yeah. But you know, obviously, everybody. So the starting, everybody. the starting of that whole party and parties here and there. That's how we started getting to know everyone. I see. BDC. Yeah, just playing shows. We never, we never, just playing a uh, house parties because we never really legit play stages until like later, right? The BDC. No. Yeah, of, later. I'm saying. Oh, in the beginning, when we're in the beginning, it was house, parties, house yeah. parties. So your yeah. first show was one of the house. Yeah, parties, yeah, right? exactly, for sure. Yeah, um, and in his house, sometimes we have like get-togethers. Yeah. yeah. We had this BDC show, like so. That same apartment where I had the studio and we had the meeting, we had the, I lived on a corner block on o- O'Brien oh. Avenue, like off of White Plains Road, all the way down by Shore Haven and stuff. Yeah. And we had this like we called it a block party. Okay. It wasn't it wasn't like mentioned to the town. We just <laughs> put it together and we just decided it's a free show, everybody come by. We didn't think it was gonna be as big as it did. So the cops eventually shut it down, yeah. unfortunately. <laughs> But it took up literally the entire freaking like corner, yeah. half a block in either direction. Wow. And there was, like, tons of people. And we were, it was, that's, during that time, I was actually playing with Right to Zero and Driven by Hatred at the same time. So I, I remember playing twice that, that day. That's um, funny, yeah. It was, it was cool. It was fun. Yeah. But there was 
so it was mind boggling how many people were there. And my parents were totally like down with it. They were cool with it. Yeah. Our neighbors and my parents were sitting out on the steps and on the stoop with yeah. just, just watching all this mash. mayhem. Like it was moshing in the street, moshing like right by the bands. It was just like, like metal hardcore in the yeah, Bronx. Wow. And obviously because of all the moshing and all the like bodies flying all over the place, people like the neighbors were like like what the hell is going on? What the hell is this? Yeah. Like, let me get on the phone, nine one one. You know, <laughs> shut this shit down. <laughs> so that's in the beginning. Yeah. When 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 the cops showed up, did the show shut down, or y'all kept going? Yeah, no, we we were playing until they literally told us no. Yeah, like, cut it yeah, off, stop. Like it was to a point. But once the cops came, people started you know scattering. Yeah, yeah, cops sure. scattered five yeah. zero. <laughs> Absolutely. But, um, yeah, it was cool. Wow, wow, and then. Uh, do you remember the first like venue uh, aside from house parties that Rights Reserve played at? Yeah, remember? I, I wouldn't that say it's Rights Reserve, but remember the place on St. Mark's? Oh, was it Neck when you all played there? Maybe. Yes. Remember the, the old lady? Oh yes, bar? yes. Oh my God, I even have pictures of that. Oh, yeah. oh that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we at that time I was hanging out. So we already had graduated, I guess, and I was going. Uh, I was hanging out a lot and watching the Square Park with uh, my uh, other guitar player Manny and Malik. Yeah. And we that's where we met a lot of other friends too, that like other bands, you know. And that was our first show. Right? Yeah, and our first, and I don't know how we got the gig. Maybe we went in there to talk. It was in down St. Mark's, really close to Avenue A. Okay, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. Uh, um, and uh, it was this we called this old lady, right? Because it was yeah, this old just, like Russian Polish lady. It was like a lounge bar. bar type of place. Yeah, yeah. And I she just told us like, yeah, you could play. I don't even know if it was her or maybe somebody agreed because later on she was like, wait, a minute. she had I no idea what this. she was getting into. Yeah. Oh my. <laughs> so God. we did. We we're like, oh shit. We're hanging out in Washington Park, or Washington Square Park, and I'm like, dude, we're having a show, and we started telling everybody it's free too. Yeah, of course they're gonna come. You know, everyone's gonna come. So it was a free show, and then uh, yeah. we went there. Right, we got, we got, we already had our instruments. I don't know how we had everything. You know, how we brought the instruments because no, you had my van. You had your van. Okay? Oh, okay. So then, yeah, we had everything there ready, and everyone's just started leaking in little by little click, click, click. and she's kind of like mm -hmm. <laughs> and once we started playing you know again we weren't as brutal and heavy like yeah, sure. bands, but we were heavy yeah, and some, loud, yeah. you know so she was just kind of like trying to shut it down a couple of times it was, right it was she so kept interrupting packed. yeah it was so packed that there was people crowd surfing yeah, yeah. that's how packed it was and she was flipping the hell out because yeah. like, it was a bunch of kids not buying drinks oh yeah that's obviously the thing. Yeah. how she makes money of course so she kept saying you yes. gotta buy drinks you gotta, you gotta buy, buy drinks so I remember one of us on the microphone saying they're gonna shut this down if you guys don't buy drinks <laughs> but we were all underage we were underage <laughs> so it was like buy soda but you know buy soda yeah, so like, like, yeah they eventually like, like so we kept what well, was kind of messed up like we abused the situation because we we kept playing, although she was saying, Yeah, yeah, we kept we going. Yeah. We're like, Fuck it, let's keep going. Let's keep going. <laughs> so, yeah. we have, eventually, we stopped because I guess we ran out yeah. of music. <laughs> we ran out of song, but we did. That was our first, that was the first legit, yeah, yeah, that, yeah, was, that the first was the first legit. legit. Wow, yeah, it's St. Mark's by Avenue. Yeah. I never know the name of the bar, that's like, funny, and it completely changed over the yeah, years. It's like, a bunch yeah, of different, yeah, yeah. it's still a I'm bar sure. now, but it's like yeah. different, yeah, yeah. But we, uh, yeah, so at that time, I had, I had a van. I bought one of those Ford Aerostar vans with the blue and the gray stripes. Uh -huh. And obviously, that looks it looks like a dad mobile or whatever, or a <laughs> soccer mom mobile. Yeah, and yeah. I ended up spray painting it. I don't I don't know if you remember, if you were helping me or not, but like I remember somebody there was a couple of people helping me. We spray painted the entire thing black. 18 wow. And, uh, <laughs> we used to go. That's when we started playing. We got a show hooked up at at CBGB's. Mm -hmm. um, I know we played with God of Memphis at that point, at one point, yeah. and then usually after all these shows, I was the only, I was kind of like the designated driver yeah, yeah, yeah. in a sense, but yeah. not because of drinking, but just because I had a, a van. Yeah, yeah, sure. So we used to pack the van, not just with our equipment, but as many people that yeah. cram in there, and we would just Even just after go the shows, hang shows, out, that was like, that. That was like the, the, back, the, the backstage kind of go yeah, to the after van. parties. With back, and you just <laughs> the place in there. And, yeah, so it was, it was awesome. Wow. And what about um, in the Bronx? Did you all play at like any of the venues in the Bronx, like the Train Depot or or later on um, uh, Blackthorn or Blackthorn, places like yeah, that? Yeah, we play Blackthorn. We play yep. Blackthorn. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have, a, I have a crazy story of Blackthorn. I don't know if you remember one, which is the one that stands out the most because I was like, we're going to get murdered. So <laughs> it was, uh, it was uh, us, 
so funny enough, like again, like it was awesome that you know our peers, all our, all our people that play with us, like they respected. We weren't as brutal and heavy as them, yeah. But they were always fucking like us. Uh, Barry, by the way, hilarious. Barry would fucking remember this. Barry would look at us and right to serve and me. And I'm, he was like, ah, the guy with the single pedal, yeah. <laughs> like I was the only one within those bands. I was playing single pedal because everybody already had the double of skills. Course, you know, yeah, yeah, crazy. Yeah. So I was always, I remember that. He was like, you're the guy with the single pedal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, screaming. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's me. And I somehow managed and develop a style to do like certain double pedal stuff with a single. But eventually, yeah. I caved in and I got it. But at a, at a, a Black Thorn, yeah. yeah, Black Thorn was a, a we had a show with. All these heavy bands. Yeah. It might have been Go to Mantis. For sure, it was irate. Yeah. Because in Go to Mantis, and I don't know, maybe All Out War, I don't know who, just heavier bands. We we're the only one that wasn't heavy. That day, actually, and, in the beginning, sorry, but, you mm-hmm. know, the it was a full, it was a full day thing because they had a matinee show and they had oh, like yeah, the yeah, yeah. Oh. And the matinee show. Candiria played that. Oh, oh, that, yeah, oh that's yeah, the yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 I, I heard Candiria play yeah. Black Thorn. Yeah. It was amazing because yeah. like, we knew they played and it was just like... Yeah, that was know. another run, you know, sick as bands. And uh, and I think well, Manny borrowed the, the amps, the speakers, remember? Uh, yeah, I don't know if it was from my Nando. Room. It might have been Nando's Yeah, stuff. from Nando's, yeah. And uh, sometimes we'll boost it up a little too much in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, I think sure. it was Manny because we were nervous, you know, and we would smoke. And uh, Manny was like a little too much and I didn't even know that he was that fucked up, but... Maybe I don't know in the second song or early. Yeah, he he's playing like boom, boom. He falls into the freaking oh, stack yeah. and the shit almost. <gasps> I don't know if it actually fell to the ground, but almost. I don't know. Maybe people grabbed it. I don't know. And I was like, oh fuck, dude, like that's it. Yeah. And these guys are gonna hate us. We're not gonna play with anybody. We we're out of the BDC, you know. Yeah. Because there was a lot of things that, like you know, unfortunately, <laughs> but there were fun times too. But it was fucked up. Uh, Malik. Yeah. We used to get a lot, like really messed up sometimes, you know. Like, yeah. Just fucking. Lee took it sometimes to another level. Yeah, he. I would party of that. I would call him. He was like the Jim Morrison of the band. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> bad guys, bad guys. You know, sometimes he got a little yeah. bad, but it was no matter what he held it down. But there was times where he just went overboard, and people did not. They were not vibing with that. They were like, "Dude, that's disrespectful." Da, da, yeah. da. And I was like, "Jesus, dude." Mm-hmm. And then that happened at the Black Dome with Manny, and I'm like, "Dude, but hey." Everyone still liked us. We were still good. We're rock and good roll. To go. Yeah, yeah. We're still good to go, you know? And, and that's why we like to go. But that was, we definitely played the Black Thorn. Yeah. And I don't know what other places out there. Because it was Bronx, not many. Not many. Like, oh, uh, no, that was Queens. Castle yeah. Heights. Oh, you they played Castle Queens, Heights and Queens. Infamous of Castle course. Heights, yeah. yeah. That was of a, lot, a lot of shows. You played a lot there. And in the city, we used to play the Spiral. I'm the Spiral. Oh, the, the Spiral. Yeah, yeah, The Spiral, the Pyramid. Yeah, Pyramid. The Pyramid, Spiral. Uh, ABC No Rio, maybe we did. Yeah, maybe we got a little bit of that. I got I got some of those shows later with Johnny Cage. Uh, yeah, it was mainly. I out, think in the city we almost we were almost able to play every yeah band. almost every band. Yeah, uh, like we played a lot of places yeah. in the city. Like, cause this is this is before Brooklyn became a thing, you know. <laughs> yes, we, that's true. And so that's all we did is play in the city. If it wasn't Castle Heights and Queens or the Blackthorn, we were playing everywhere in the city. I know? see. And yeah, it was trying to get into those shows on good nights and good, you know, good time slots. It was tough, but we're, we're doing it. You know? Yeah, yeah. But, it, yeah, but the Bronx, I can't remember any other ones, that were, like, aside from the Black Thorn and house parties. Yeah. yeah. Well, apartment parties. Yeah, apartment yeah. parties, that's right, yeah. <laughs> there were many houses out there. I know there are a few shows um, uh, off Pelham Parkway. I mean, it might have been more like the later 90s. Um Oh, uh, attached to, um, it's close to one of the rehearsal studios on East Chester Road. Um, a lot of bands play that, but yeah, I think I heard that in some of yeah. the interviews. But but we never went to studios because we were lucky enough to, to play always at the end. So. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When we started, there was a time when we were playing in studios. We we're in the that was 30s. When, yeah, but that was way later when we were going on Funkadelic studios. Yeah, Funkadelic. Yeah. Oh, I see. I see. And I forgot what. That was towards the end of towards the, the band. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. End of the band. Mm-hmm. So Funkadelic Studios was known also for it. They also had parties there. And we had yeah. so, a lot of BDC people were there also. Ah. We had so many crazy parties there that I think at one point we all, I think we all kind of got banned. We weren't allowed to <laughs> yeah. do that shit anymore. Even we would just be hanging out in the hallways. It was in the hallways. It was just hanging. It was like a hot, you know. Yeah, like sure. A house party, uh, sure. Whatever. Everybody's drinking, smoking in the hallways, and then you go inside, listen to the like. Right now, you come in, 
and everyone's fucking crowding, you know, everyone, everything's like jumping around, moshing, and it's crowded as fuck. And yeah, and it was mayhem. And then sometimes, of course, accidents happen. Of course, like, yeah. The guys that were renting the place are like, no, I'm not trying to do this here anymore. <laughs> so yeah, that was that was a lot of partying in that place too. Wow, wow. Um, so uh, one part of the early history of Rights Reserve that I realize uh, uh, want to know a little more about is um, how did you all uh, first meet up with like Malik and Manny? Do you remember? So Manny, I was uh, I, I met Manny in, in which Manny? Oh no, Manny, Manny the guitarist. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Molina, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, Manny was a uh, 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 in my gym class in Stevenson. Oh, uh, okay, okay. And I okay. remember, I remember sitting there. We were playing like you know, what a football. And we were picking kids to be like, oh, you're gonna do this, you're gonna be this, you know, for for whatever teams we were doing. It wasn't real football. Was yeah, like, sure. And uh, Manny was sitting next to me, and he's humming a Metallica song. <laughs> oh, humming or going, and I'm just like, what the hell, man? I was like, what's this guy doing? I'm like, because back then there was nobody you know, that listened yeah. to metal. At least I don't. And I'm like looking around, I'm like, dude. And I'm like, he's got to, he probably woke up this morning and heard that song by accident. And he's humming it. You know how sometimes in the morning <laughs> yeah. you wake up and you're like, you hear a song and it gets stuck in your head. Or he really likes it. So I was just like, hey, man, do you really like that? And like, he's like, yeah, Metallica, hell yeah. And I was like, oh, shit. And he spoke Spanish, man. He's from uh, Colombia. Uh -huh. So so we both, you know, I knew Spanish already more than English. And I was like, oh, cool. So that's when we became buddies and started talking about music, da, da, da. Then later on, we met uh, Leon. Malik, I think Malik came about with, if I'm not mistaken, I think Ramon knew Malik. Oh. From, uh, they went to school, high school together. And that's how. And then I Malik see. eventually came to one of our, maybe maybe your house to see us jam. Yeah. Or Malik we had like a, I mean, sometimes we have backyard parties yeah. too, by that shed. Ah, yeah. And sure. Malik liked us. Malik was like, dude, like, I like what you're doing. And it's like, he kind of just joined yeah. in, right? I think that's how it happened. Uh, yes, yeah. and that's what those were the core members. So it's uh, Leon, uh, Manny, Malik. I see, I see, I see. Yeah, and then and, um, and, and, and I think and Manny of course, came later because I think we we knew each other way before Manny. We met Manny. Yeah, I know, yeah, but yeah. I met Manny because he was in my class. Oh, gotcha, class. Gotcha, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But we already, yeah, me and Leon were already skating, hanging out, and stuff. Yeah. Uh, I see, yeah, I see, yeah, I see. Yeah. Um, Manny didn't speak a lick of English as yeah, far as I remember like, exactly. when we first met him. And yeah, yeah. I remember having conversations with him and it was just like him learning English at the same time. And I was, was in like, between. I was trying to help out but also uh -huh. learning English. You know, and and now if you, if you speak to him, it's like, yeah. holy crap. Like, yeah, it's been a totally years. different person. Wow. Wow. And then uh, Leon, like, like which which part of the history of Righteous Earth were you like doing double duty with um, Driven by Hatred? So it was, yeah, it was towards the, the end of it, roughly, right? Was it, I don't remember if it was, like, the end or... Yeah, it was a little bit towards the end, yeah. yeah. I'm trying to remember if it was... Was it side or was it right here? Well, that you were playing? When I was playing the, that party, when we did the corner party in O'Brien. Oh, no, that's right, sir. It was, right? Yeah, okay. it was inside. Right? Yeah, so it was definitely towards the, the end of it because... Um, I think it was a, they needed another guitar, so they wanted another guitarist at the time. They liked the style that I played, and they, I don't remember how it came about, but it was either, I think it was Manny, because Manny was playing bass for us at the same time, so he was like, you, you, are you free, do you feel right to play with GBH at the same time? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, why not? Like, I spoke to them about it, no one had any issues yeah. with it, and I liked, I liked the heavy part too, I liked the heavy guitars, so I was like, yeah, why not just branch out, so... But it was a small time, like it wasn't really that long um, that I played with them. Yeah. Um, I don't remember why either. Like it just didn't, like the, the connection yeah. didn't continue, you know? Yeah. So, and that was definitely later because that's when Manny, yeah, was already good playing. Prior I to see. Manny, Malik was always on bass. On bass, I see. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I see. So maybe right around there, Malik was doing Go to Mantis. And uh -huh. Manny came in and uh, they were singing. Oh, shit. Yeah, so I don't know. know. Well, I think Malik was singing, but just singing. I, yeah, I but not as much. No, Malik would, and Manny were definitely in the band at the same time at one point. Yeah, but yeah. that's so when Malik wasn't playing. You all were a five-piece set at one point yeah, for a little bit then, huh? Yeah, yeah. I, I see. I remember when Manny from DBH was in the band, um, there was also a, the drive to, like, we want to we make this go a lot further. So there was, like, a, a little serious 
entity to it, but not all of us were on the same page at that time. I and I yeah. think, if I'm not mistaken, I don't want to talk out of place, but I think Malik wasn't too much about that either. Um, so it was just like, where do we take this? I, if if I'm correct, that's kind of what started breaking up the band as well. Like you know, we, I see. We, Some we people want to keep the their page. roots like underground, and right. other people's like, now nah, we want to bring it up. And like how do we commercialize it? Do we like? Like, do we just stay trying to, you know, keep it local? Like, what do we, you know, what do we do at that point? I and see. Not, and it's tough. Like, when the whole band is not on the same page, it's mm-hmm. it's hard to keep, or to keep going in a, in a certain direction. You know? Yeah. And it's interesting because you mentioned that same kind of tension with um, the BDC mm-hmm. itself, too. Um, yeah. 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 Uh, and so... Like, being in a band in general is like having... You know, whatever amount of girlfriends you yeah, have is in the band. Relationships, you know, that's, that's exactly what it is. You got egos, personalities, deal with personalities uh-huh. and relationships. Uh huh. Some are stronger than others. You know, it's that's really right. That simple. Um, and what about what about the compilation that you all are on? Um, do you want to talk about the experience of recording that? And who who all was in the band at the time um, that you all recorded those songs? I think Manny was in that one. Yeah, right. I think Manny was in that. Yeah, we recorded two songs, one called Minus and uh-huh. one Builder. Yeah, Builder and Minus. Um, I feel like Manny wasn't there. And we went up to upstate New York. Uh, yeah. This guy named John, I think it was... John, I is it John Christoph? John yeah, Christoph. John Christoph. Yes, that's exactly yep. where we recorded it. Um, and we, yeah, it was, it was crazy. I don't know who set that up, but it just happened. A lot of times yeah. when I was like, yeah, I'm telling you, <laughs> those days were been, like... It might have been Manny. Because yeah. he had the yeah, other connections. Yeah, yeah. He recorded a lot of Bronx See, bands. Irate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. The Purchase yeah. he recorded. Yeah. I yeah, Drove by Hatred. Stopped, yeah. all, especially a lot of the, the BDC bands. Exactly, yeah. Whoever was connected to John Christoph, I don't know who that was, but started telling all the other bands and all the BDC bands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think it's for that reason specifically because they wanted to all have a similar sound. You yeah. know, on that compilation. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. You, you guys kind of took care of that. Like, there's a, yeah. a there was a point that I do remember that Leon and Manny were taking it more seriously. Like Manny and I feel Manny. like me and and the other Manny were more like just parting it up, you uh, know, just like chilling. Yeah, like, yeah, we'll get fun. there. We'll get there. But these guys were driven. So I was like, oh shit! Now we got a compilation or like the BBC. I just don't know how it happened, but it happened. Right. You know? Yeah. So things were uh, things were moving. We're trying to move it forward, I guess, and these guys were kind of, kind of doing it. And we did do some stuff, you know. So eventually, exactly, yeah. some people pulling it this way, other people pulling it that way. So yeah. it's, just like, it's hard to keep it together. Yeah, and and you all, um, Leon, I know you mentioned uh, that you know Rights Reserve recorded you know four tracks uh, on a regular basis. Was that just like um, rehearsals that you all recorded? Yeah, that when we create songs or uh, just for example, like if I wanted to make a song whatever i had everything set up in my house so yeah 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 record it that's great a four, four track. track and then <laughs> give the tape to someone else or, or alex or whoever yeah. or say you know put your part on there or what do you yeah. think about this yeah. and it was constantly we had the ability to on the spot record at all times wow with the mics and all things set up so it really like it kind of helped us excel pretty quickly as far yeah. as like you know getting everything together from the point yeah. we learned how to play instruments to the point where we're playing shows is a very short yeah. period of time. Wow. And it was all like a lot of, I have to give a lot of credit to my parents, you know, in a yeah, lot of yeah, ways because yeah. without the ability to play whenever the hell we wanted to exactly, play yeah. for as long as we just could hang play. out there. Sometimes we would pass out in this, in this, in this room yeah. where he had kind of like, you know, like, you know, a studio room and it would just wake up and say, oh, there's Jen. Wow. And we'll continue writing stuff, you know, like that's where all the ideas came together, stitching things together. Yeah. And my mom would always yeah. make us, uh, yeah. Meals and she was, oh. she was a stay at home mom, so she yeah yeah cool. Cool. really cool man. It was awesome. And your dad, I got a funny story. His dad would actually this was probably the first name before any name. Uh, it's definitely so the first name. His said. dad used to come up always like I guess after work right because it would be like kind of like after uh, like five I guess. Yeah. And he would crack open a beer, you know, and he'd just come upstairs. You can tell you just like hear it. It's like he'll open the door. It would like jam in a rocket. And he was just, like. The nasty noisemakers in the house. <laughs> the nasty noisemakers in the house. Yeah, and we were like, yeah, yeah, that's oh it. Oh, my it. So God. That was, that was, and he would just walk out, right? Yeah, the shit. nasty right. noisemakers. Just kind of wanted to check up on us. You know, I guess. And that's the first name, actually, before show up next. Is we were the nasty noisemakers. It was crazy. If you can imagine, like, we had a, you know, one family house yeah. in a room. No soundproofing. Oh, yeah, whatsoever. yeah, yeah. 
So, <laughs> yeah, we're on the second floor of the house. Props to the, the freaking neighbors, I guess. Yeah, too, like the know? neighbors, my parents, like everybody, like you could hear it a block away easily. <laughs> like, you know, us just playing all these yeah. different, like, well, you, we were lucky also yeah. on one side was uh, Joey and TJ, the guys that we used to talking yeah. about, but yeah. the side of DJ, they were cool about it. They were like the hip hop kids that were yeah. really into like DJing, and we were like the two kids metal that were into age. metal and rock and, and skating. Yeah. But for some reason, we, we like got along with them, you know, very oh, well. Yeah, we were all best we all friends. hung out together. And actually, eventually, they picked up skating and started, yeah. started rolling with us. Wow. Even though skating was not popular. Especially in the hip hop scene. Yeah, sure. You know, now it's, it's crazy different. how it like completely flipped. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, so, did you all ever, aside from like recording songs and rehearsals and then the compilation, did you all ever um, record uh, like demos on your own? Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so, I'm trying to remember which one it was. I think Chris, John Kristoff, actually, because of that show, he actually, we asked them to do a demo for us. Okay. Um, if, if I'm mistaken, right? I think he did a demo for us. Did he? think so. Damn, man. I don't remember, because I know like, John Christoph did a demo for my, the band after that, for Side. For Side. They, he did a, a, a CD or whatever for that. Um, I don't remember if we did it for Right to Zerve, but for Right to Zerve, our friends that we mentioned, Raymond and Walter, they were kind of next level as far as recording yeah. phones and, and sound studio and all that. So he actually helped us record a demo cassette, right? She's our demo cassette, and it was like professionally done. It was like, wow, I don't remember how many tracks, eight to 22 Dude, tracks, or whatever. You don't remember that, right? Because he had his, like all this digital equipment and stuff like that, and he helped us put that together. That's he also did wow. that for, if I'm not mistaken, go to Memphis too. Like he came to my apartment oh. and recorded some of their stuff. Wow. Uh, yeah, and it, it was. It's pretty cool. Wow, he was the man back then. Yeah. He's doing all this do, stuff. do you know if anyone has that that demo? The one for Go to Mentz is probably uh, I think, Ramon yeah, has. Yeah, yeah, I think but I have some. Uh, so but, I, I, I was going through the cassettes that he was talking about yeah. that he gave me. I have a lot of, maybe I could go through those. I can have some Go to Mentz. So you might have the rights reserved one then, huh? The, with the blunt. Oh, that with one. The ghost and the blunt. The yeah, yeah, but that's not a demo. That's when we played at CB's. Oh, no, that's it? a live CB. Oh, that's a live CB. Oh, that's a live CB show okay. yeah. with Manny Cortez. Uh, oh, so oh, yeah. so that's wow. why I'm like, I don't know if we really have a legit demo. Demo. I no, see. Like, we do. I just don't know okay. which one. Which right. one it is? But yeah. yeah wow. But, but it was a. Uh, yeah, I think. Yeah, you're right. We do. Yeah, I know we definitely yeah. do. I just don't remember. We had that song called one. Robotech. Remember? Yeah. <laughs> and a tropical fantasy. Yep. Yeah, that was like it sounded better. Like the quality was better. So we actually, it's funny they said that we actually remade. So Tropical Fantasy with Malik and Right to Zert, my my band later side, we actually remade that song yeah. um, into side and we changed the, the lyrics changed yeah. and the structure of the song changed with yeah. a couple of riffs. That was a good song. And, and you guys played it, me and Manny were like, yo, you guys, you guys can play it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah I remember men mentioning it to them, yeah. like, we're going to remake this song. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so we do have, like, I guess, a, a little demo and then some live CBGBs that was recorded live. We pay like a sound guy. Yeah, you can pay the sound guy to record it. It sounds amazing. Yeah, for twenty, give him twenty bucks and he records yeah. it for seven. Wow. So that's pretty cool because it's like you know, like <coughs> that's the dream, right? Playing at CBGBs. Like, Absolutely. Oh, Back then. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as far as like, uh, did you all have like a logo and like you know like any. Shirts or other kinds of things. No, nah, we never made? did merch, but we did have yeah. stickers. We had stickers. Yeah, so our stickers was like the R, like backwards, kind of like the yeah. Toys R Us. Yeah. yeah. So two like that phase in. So R R rights reserved. Yeah. And, and we had the, stickers. I remember the the word, the font, the words uh -huh. rights reserved specifically. Yeah. <laughs> it was just an Enviro font. That's okay. Right. Just the simple. So it was just huh? stickers for merch. It was stickers and pretty much markers. Oh yeah, <laughs> sure. We would tag like sure. we put like you know. We would put like right to serve Bronx Hardcore and BDC, you know. Yeah, yeah, BDC. Excited, but it's tagging BDC for sure. You know? A lot of people, I'm sure you know this, have tattoos. Absolutely, BDC. some they still were, do. Some they went all out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Whoever, whoever, there's another band and, and they just want to joke about it. They'd be like, "Oh, Big Dick Crew." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jay Boogie does that shit. Yeah, he's like, "Yeah, it's no longer BDC, Big Dick Crew." Right. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Um, and so. Uh, you want to talk a little bit more about like the end of rights reserved, and then and then you both of you can uh, then transition to like you know the the bands you're in afterwards. 
don't even remember how it ended. I don't remember really how it ended. I don't even like think we. I, I don't think there was ever like a set like oh we're breaking up. Yeah, yeah. it was just falling apart little by little, apart. and mainly not even so much falling apart. Like everybody's kind of losing interest in Rights Reserve, and everybody just moving to different bands. Yeah. I see. So like like Leon said, like he was already doing driven by hatred, and then later on. I don't know how you got into side, but then side again, like way after, right? me and Manny used to jam out with a friend of ours, Robert. Remember Robert? Robert? Yeah, yeah. And like, he would come up with other riffs that were heavier that we were like more into. So we were kind of like siding more, like kind of started writing stuff. You just, you just reminded me. And this is, uh, this is when, uh, I'm sure you heard, Amoria came about. Yes, yes, yes. So we started writing music with Rob, Manny, and me. And then Malik. Malik would just go wherever. It's like, yo, this sounds good. I want to join in. So eventually he just started playing with Amoria more. Ah, and that's when we started to develop. And then I guess Leon was busy. He's like, okay, so if you guys are doing that, I'm just going to go no, this no, way. Like, but I don't know exactly if there was yeah, ever like, dude, we're done. Because you reminded me. So uh, it actually became a more of a personal, like, it, it, it hurt. Like, it did hurt. Like, so when they started doing Moria, like, I was totally cool with it. Yeah. And then I remember it being this thing where they seemed to be a little bit more passionate about it. And I was like, all right, yeah, whatever. And it kind of like, it was okay at first, but and then it started. At one point, I remember we were supposed to be jamming at my apartment, um, right to Zurich. Yeah. And Rob and Christian, like Malik, was everybody came, and I remember they wanted to, they wanted to start doing Moria songs, and for some for some strange reason, it didn't feel right. Like for me, it felt like, all right, now like this is supposed to be a right to rehearse, right to Zurich rehearsal, and I was becoming an Moria rehearsal, and I was just kind of feeling uneasy about it, and that kind of later on those feelings didn't really go away and at some point that apartment in Hunts Point that we're saying that that first floor like squatter place uh -huh. I remember I think we put on a show or there was a show happening with Amoria um, maybe right to I don't know um, but Alex asked me and this is what this is the stunt <laughs> so he asked me uh, can you leave my drums over there because we the, it was there and I was like surprised like why am I not bringing your drums back you know and that's when I kind of knew there was something not right like it was it was ending or whatever and it for me I think that was the beginning of the end of the band because it was like you could tell there was more they had more passion towards your band and whatever it was what it was and not too long after that that's when I started more connecting with Will Will Gomez um, from Blackout and everything because he was in right to zero at the time and him and I always, we got along, we're best friends to this day and stuff, yeah. and um, we we started trying to say how we're going to establish, what are we going to do, like, let's find another band, what can we do? We started, like, mm -hmm. looking around, we saw an ad in uh, in the Village Voice, I think it was, um, and I can't remember the guy's name, what was it, the Dominican guy's name with the ball head, with, uh, who was to play punk rock, uh, Brian, maybe Brian. Brian? Brian, 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 Brian. Yeah. yes. He used to be in, uh, yeah. yeah. Forgot, uh, uh, forgot his name. Home 33. Yeah, so yeah, Ryan from Home 33. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. You, actually, you guys play right yeah. now. Him and our old drummer, Carlos, they were advertising for bass player and the guitarist. Okay. And we just stumbled upon that ad somehow, and we answered it. We went to the studio, and ironically enough, so... Will is an amazing bass player. Yeah, he's yeah. Like, he's just, you know, top level, right? And when we jammed that day, or we rehearsed, and we, <coughs> we, uh, what's the word? We tried out for the, for the band. Audition. Yeah. We audition, thank you. <coughs> Ryan and Carlos, for some reason, you know, we played, we jammed, we had, we had a good time. Then they contacted me after and said, we like your style, we like, we want to have you as a guitar player. But Ryan doesn't quite want Will in the band. He doesn't like his style. And I'm like, I was mind blown. Like I'm like, are yeah. you fucking kidding me? Like yeah, he yeah. was a way better musician than I am. Like yeah. I like I have to give him full credit and stuff. And I'm like, no, nah, that just doesn't make sense. Like I, I can't do that. Like I don't feel comfortable with that. Um but just so happened that Ryan, um, I was talking to Carlos and Ryan and they were like, Yeah, we, we need to make a decision. Ryan said I'm going to go away, forgot where he was going, and when I come back, let's make a decision on that, whatever. So while he was gone, I convinced Carlos, you can't get rid of Will. Like, he is way too good of a bass player, trust me on this, and all this stuff. So Carlos, Will, and I formed side, which which we kind of 
uh, Ryan wasn't happy about that. Yeah. I almost tried to convince Ryan you're making a mistake by saying no. Ryan said, no, you know, F you guys, I'm, I'm out, I'm not doing this. Um, you guys do whatever you want. So we stayed together as a band and then eventually got a singer to, to complete the side. I see, I see. But, can I say something? And in my defense, no, no, you're, no, you're not defense. It's, 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 more, it's more like, kind of like what he touched on earlier. How, like some people were going more serious yeah and i'm not gonna lie i was that guy that was like nah let's keep it underground let's keep it more hardcore and i wanted to get heavier because the price reserve wasn't that heavy yeah so amoria was heavier yeah. and i was getting into other shit so i felt like that exactly like that was my lane now and then leon yeah always wanted to keep it more i don't know if maybe mainstream but you did want to take it i wanted yeah I wanted yeah to, take to the top and manny too manny too yeah. i remember yeah. the two guys that's why i said yeah. you guys made a lot of stuff happen and me and manny were more like yeah yeah we're gonna get to it and you know, again we're younger Who's yeah. it up? You yeah. know, left hand on the floor. You're puffing a blow. <laughs> you know? and it's like that's what we like fucking do, you know. So we we're always like, yeah, it's no problem. We're gonna get to it, and yeah. we wanted to get heavier. So yeah, we lean more towards Amoria, and then they started doing that, and it made perfect sense because yeah. when I heard the stuff, like side, I was like, oh shit, you guys are fucking taking it out yeah. there. Yeah, because we yeah. even went to see you guys yeah. you know, later yeah, on. Exactly. That's why I felt like we played at the Blackthorn. Yeah. Oh, well, Continental. Side, huh? You guys play Continental. And Continental, and Continental was another place that we all used to play too. Okay, that was sure, a famous sure, spot sure. too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think White Sister played it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bu- sure. bunch of bands. But yeah, that was that. That was the the break. The break right there, without even saying anything. But it's like different interests. You yeah, know? and we're it, we're so such good friends that it was like yeah, you, know, you squash it. It's just you put it by the wayside. It happened. Like, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. like. You know, it is what it is. We have our different ways. We just want to keep yeah. going. You know? Yeah, that's right. And funny thing that later on, <laughs> after Cy broke up, Will and Dean, Dean was the yeah. singer, right? Not, not even the guitar player. He was no, the singer. singer the straight as well. Yeah. He when, plays guitar. When they finally never... found a singer, when, and it was Dean, and, which is Will's good friend. Um, they When Cy broke up, they started Johnny Cage as a thing. And Johnny Cage was, uh, was dumb too. Gigi on uh-huh. drums and uh, and this kid uh, Ryan. Ryan, yeah, that's right, the singer, yeah, right? The screamer singer, yeah. And then, screamer, yeah. And then once Gigi went through the whole transition of like, I guess she had to move out. I don't know what the deal was. She she, even, she went to another country. I think she went to Spain. And then they kind of like called me up. Like they were like, we need a drummer. And I think maybe Will and Ryan like recommended me, or like just like, yo, let's, let's try Alex. And I was kind of hungry at that time. I was already. Going back, like I was like, okay, I'm stuck in this lane where it's just like Amoria, we're not going nowhere. Yeah. Bunch of fucking potheads drinking 40s, just riding, riding stuff. We jam out here, we play little gigs there. We weren't taking it that serious. And then when Will came along and you know, told me, like, yo, we're trying to do something here, like for real. And I was like, you know what, maybe this is my chance. So I jumped in there to audition. And that was the hardest thing ever, man. Props to Gigi because she's she's sick on the drums. I know she she's is. Amazing yeah. on the drums, you know. And I know she mentioned like I, I'm probably one of the first people, along with others, that inspire her to play. But like now she inspires me. You know? yeah. Like I see her, and I was like, whoa, man, she took it out there. And I hearing those drum parts on Johnny Cage, I was like, whoa, man. And I knew I had to step up my game and and get up there because I they were gonna they wanted a tour, they wanted to play yeah. out. And I was like, hell yeah, I'm gonna do it. And I I got through it. I even got the okay from Gigi because one time she was there listening. I'm like, oh fuck, man. but I felt good because I knew her. I didn't feel that bad, you know. So and I nailed it. You know, I got all the stuff and I yeah. learned the songs that we were gonna play into the show, into the, to the uh, gigs that we did. And we yeah. toured like all the way down to Florida. I can't That's we used to do like a week, probably tops two weeks. Yeah. Come back with no fucking money. That was tough, man. Unhealthy, you know. Uh, broke, yep. and, you know, and. Uh, that, yeah, and that was my thing of uh, where I where I ended up after after Amoria. So right to serve Amoria, and then Johnny, Johnny Cage, Cage is fake. and then eventually, yeah, uh, Will again. Everyone has a different interest, you know. Will and and uh, and uh, Dean, I think. I don't want to talk over talk, but I think they wanted to tour more, and they had like pretty decent jobs. And yeah. me and Ryan didn't like you know we always like living paycheck to paycheck, so. Th- and I'm like, dude, if you're going to tour, it's coming out of our pockets. Like, yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's tough, you know, yeah. and ask for days off. They want to do more touring. I think Ryan and I at that time wanted to do write, write more music. I see. So we we're kind of clashing, and eventually, again, that broke off. It's like, okay, you guys do you, and then we do our thing. Then they continue on with some of our, some other songs with Johnny Cage to do Tiger Flowers. I don't know if we'll talk about that. A little bit, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, 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 that's, yeah. What, that's, what, that's the last thing that I heard from them up to where Will is at now with 
Dawson becomes, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That's it. That's, that's the, right. That's the transition. And, 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 and then Leon, Leon stayed in, in, inside, but I don't know what happened. Yeah, side there. broke up basically kind of collectively made a mistake to get rid of Dean. Like, like, I say get rid of him, but yeah, like, not, we want to look for a different style of singer. I see. And uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail because that's still a sensitive topic, I think. Um, but because that happened when we no longer were with Dean, that's when we, we did struggle to look for another singer. Um, the three of us were like, Will, me and Carlos were looking for a singer for a while. And it just quite wasn't working out, and we just couldn't do it. We couldn't find that that singer that would work. We auditioned quite a few people, and it just we were going pretty good. Like for a while, we had a good stretch going. Side was really doing well with marketing. We were yeah. like, we had the money to put into like professional, um, you know, demos or whatever the case is. We were really we we're close. And this was right before the internet hit. Yeah. And I think if we would have been a little later or had a little patience i think it would have been another another thing because we're all on the same page we definitely wanted to get to that next level yeah i yeah, see you know i remember um, when you guys had a cd but i was like wow this is legit like yeah really, like where dean is a professional like photographer yeah like, um i worked in printing graphics yeah. business so we had a lot of ways to market and get things done the right way and, and we were all driven in that sense but for some reason it was just there was a point where we couldn't like Something happened, and again, I'm not going to details, but it yeah. just didn't work out. Um, and yeah, we, we ended up splitting up. And then I think right after that, that's when uh, Dean, Will, and you guys started with uh, Johnny Gage and stuff like that, right? That's, that was yeah, yeah, I guess. Gage. Yeah, that's that's same, yeah. They were already doing the thing with Gigi, but then after Gigi left, they want to continue. Right, yep. that's yeah. why I jumped in. Yeah. Um, and and what, what kind of, um, what was like the sound flavor of side? So side, I want to say music, music wise was, I like to think it was um, heavily influenced by Tool and System of a Down. Sure, sure. Deftones, Tool, System of a Down, those are definitely three big influences of the band. Because yeah. it was a lot, it was definitely guitar driven in sure. a lot of ways. But and then we also had little flavors of like uh, Primus and stuff like you know, I see. with Will and he never played with Pick. So it was yeah, like, that's it was, right. it's yeah. amazing. Um, but we did, we wanted to keep that real heavy aspect, but have a lot of melody at the same time. And we didn't want a screamer. We uh-huh. didn't want someone like, you know, belting out um, stuff like that. We wanted a more melodic singer. Uh-huh. Um, so that whole thing just fit and worked for us. And yeah. we would do, we do strange covers. Like we would try to find obscure songs that no one really knew well um, and tried to like, turn it into a metal version of it or yeah. something like that yeah sure and um it was it was pretty cool like we we're trying to find something different you know find something else and really bring that to another level yeah. but you know it didn't, it didn't work out it just it didn't turn out <laughs> and it's funny because while you were trying to go there i was trying to go more lower because see the the rights reserve outfit was kind of like kind of almost like borderline mainstream we could have mainstream yeah, stuff we could have took it either yeah but we were too young you know yeah, like, that's yeah, what sure. I think so then uh, as I mature in my drumming too and I've always wanted to play heavier but these guys weren't playing as heavy because that's what we didn't you know we did what we did with Rights Reserve so you know I always admire the Irates Godamantis all our boys you know everybody from fucking they were brutal and heavy and I was heavily inspired but Rights Reserve didn't have that so when Amoria uh, kind of got together we started doing more heavy stuff like that and uh-huh. i was like oh this is my chance to do that so i was trying to keep it more underground more heavier underground like i don't care about trying to you know and they get were, out we there. were all really into Kenderi at the time too. yeah uh, oh yeah we were like heavily uh-huh. into was heavily influenced yeah yeah Kenderia. that was influenced. yeah and all the on all the bronx bands yeah, i was like oh this yeah. is my chance to actually play brew by then i already had double pedal. Uh, right, Larry? i see <laughs> <laughs> and i was like yeah so <laughs> and then uh you know now now I was like able to actually play in a heavier band that I with the stuff that I was more inspired you know, with at that time. Yeah. You know? And, uh, you know, again, like my peers were like, you know, UV for my rate, you know? Of course. And, 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 uh, and, and Frankie, like I thought they were fucking awesome on the drums and I knew I could take it there, but I never got a chance to do that. So I think with Amoria, I felt like that should be where I should be. You know? Yeah. I belong at that time. Yeah. You know? And then Leon, of course wanted to make it more out there which i guess 
will too. We all you guys had yeah. that vision, and it, you, you guys doing great. Again, there was no animosity, no nothing. It was sure. like, dude, you guys do your thing. We're doing our thing here. Sure. You know, um, it, just taking it to different places. Did Amoria record any demos or anything uh, like that? Yeah, I think we demos. And, uh, I don't know if we recorded with you, maybe because in, in the four track. I Actually, think, yeah, I think I did help you guys. Yeah, too. sometimes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. And then okay. we recorded. Manny used to live in Brooklyn, and with this guy that had a studio kind of similar to this, but in the basement. And yeah. We, we actually got uh, uh, a friend of ours from Queens that I knew uh, that he would come. He he came and recorded us there, kind of live. Then another time, another time we paid in Funkadelic Studios. They were building an actual legit recording studio, which is the one that we spent a lot of money on. I remember that. that huh. And we got some stuff there too. But nothing like no, you know, no serious shit. It was just that. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, that, that's all. That's all we got. And some live stuff, you know. We record, we, we play here and there with some live stuff. Uh, uh, and then uh, I think Malik was in it. That's when it completely disappeared. I was looking for a singer at that time, and I, I by then I was already uh, living in Queens. By the way, so after the Bronx, I moved to Queens, and uh, and I was there like kind of with some friends. I also in a lot of uh, hardcore metal bands. And I was, I remember driving in this car, I was in this car with my friend, and there was a dude that used to hang out with us all the time, he was just a friend. And he just said like, hey man, I want to be in a fucking band or something, man. I have yeah. this energy. And I was kind of like, by then Malik, I know Malik was kind of like not interested in it, or maybe he was more into go to Mantis. I don't know what was going on at that time. And then I was like, you know what, I'm kind of looking for a singer, like a screamer or whatever. So we auditioned this guy. Um, eventually uh, uh, he came over to the studio and we liked him. He had a lot of potential. He's like very live and crazy. And uh, and uh, I don't want to say his real name because he goes by Tommy Pistol. Okay. He became a, a, a porn star eventually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right around when his career was taken off because he did his first video on my rooftop in Brooklyn. And uh-huh. That's after when I lived in Brooklyn. And we had some. We had a little. Amoria had gone through changes. Yeah. Nick was in Amoria, which is a friend of ours that he actually jams out here. He was a bass player, and it was just man after Rob left. So it was just Manny, Nick, me, and Malik. Then Malik left, left, and then Tommy Pistol joined in, and we were just writing songs, playing some, you know, playing some gigs here and there. Yeah. But then he did his first porno. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he, and like, he, he took, took off, off. Yeah, <laughs> and he literally came up to us like that typical thing where you're like hey guys you know I kind of want to make it so I'm going to go move to California and we're like bro follow your dreams <laughs> and sure enough yeah he became good to the point that he even did uh, uh, awards like one of the wow. AVN, AVN awards and he called us saying like hey guys the band prepare me for this because he was a he was a show guy you can tell yeah. he's like you know he, he's very uh, anim- animated yeah like he used to do sketch comedy and stuff like that he's a funny guy Wow. Cool, really nice, awesome dude. That's still keep in touch with him. And then after he left, when he went to pursue this, Amoria was just Nick, Manny, and I, and we just kind of turned into like an instrumental stuff, but very like fun. Like I think I had some machines, I would do like drum machines, like sound uh, effects. You know? And we kept it instrumental for a while. Yeah. And just and experimental, but always on the heavy side. And that's it. I, after a while, I think it was like, you know, that out. Around there is when I joined Johnny Cage. Because uh, I, I was see. like, dude, I'm just going to be doing this forever. And like, yeah. moving forward. That's when, when, when Will called me, you know, these guys were like, you want to try it? And I was like, yes, I think it's time for me to fucking step it up. Yeah, yeah. You know? And so Johnny Cage was the last one. So now, now I have a new band. Yeah, we'll you have a new band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah so, so, Leon, after Psy, what came next for you? That was it. That was it. Yeah, for me, it's, uh, I basically, I remember telling myself, when I was really young in my like teens to early twenties, I told myself when I reached a certain age and I didn't make it at that point that my priorities and my focus are gonna go in a different direction. Sure. So I decided like I think I tried I I love music and I would love to keep playing and just do it like hobby wise, but yeah, decided to focus, you know, career wise, family, things like that. So yeah, now I'm a dad with two kids and yeah, I'm just I still love music and yeah, that's that's what it is, you know. I, I, we were talking about it earlier today. Yeah. As a matter of fact, like, I still have my guitar. I don't have any of my equipment. I used to have tons of equipment. Yeah, sure. I would definitely play and kind of jam out and do that thing like once a week or whatever. But just more of a, of a hobby, just appreciation of music. Yeah. And not to do try anything full time anymore. Because at this point, I'm just, I'm just not doing it. Yeah. You know, yeah. Personally. For sure. 
for sure. Um, so, so yeah, Alex, what about for you after Johnny Cage is a fake, um, uh, did you like stop playing drums for a while? Yeah. Oh no, actually. Yeah, I did. And then, um, Manny's roommate, uh, not Manny Cortez, Manny Molina, the guitar player, uh -huh. right his roommate, again, they had the, the, the basement where they jam on. He would play these like really good, like he was a really good guitar player, but he was like, a, like radio friendly songs. He would play like, it sounded like freaking, uh, like if they would have came on the nineties, they would have smashed, every song was like a smashing hit. Yeah. It sounded yeah. like a, like a sound garden, Alice in Chains, like every song you pull out, I was like, damn. But he would just show me some riffs and I was like, yeah, whatever, let's just do covers, you know? And he kept showing me more, and I was like, dude, they're really good, man. So I started adding things to it. He was like, hey, you want to jam out with me? So we started jamming out, and him and I started a band called uh, Co Coder Resistance. Okay. Yeah, so it was him, me, and then I got Walter. Remember Walter? Uh, a friend of mine from back in the day. He played bass. And then another friend of mine, uh, Richard. Richard was this kid from Queens that played in a lot of hardcore, kind of new metal bands, too. Okay. He was a singer. <laughs> It's funny because he reminded me a lot of Chino, like his style. Uh, know, I see, I see. Yeah. And, uh, and, uh, so, yeah, I, I kind of put that little outfit together, like, in a way. I was like, hey, man, you want to jam out? So we wrote some songs, pretty good stuff. We recorded here, actually. Uh -huh. We recorded a lot, uh -huh. our, our demo here. And we're playing a lot of stuff, you know. And eventually, again, as always, some people want to take it one way. The other people want to, uh, like, sit in the, in, the, in the back seat, you know, or taking their time. And... By then, I was kind of like, you know, I was with my wife at the time, you know, just uh, we moved to Jersey. And I think that's when it was like, that's it, you know. And the, and the singer, was, the singer, Richard, was like, I feel like we missed our chance, you know. We had all these gigs that we didn't get to play. I'm not feeling anymore. So he stepped off to uh, Walter, the bass player. He's really busy. He's a dentist. And oh, okay. And family and everything. So he's like, yeah, I was just doing it kind of for fun. I'm yeah. not trying to go anywhere. And Andrew, the guitar player, he's still sick with it man he still records stuff he moved eventually to california wow but yeah after that the band broke up and then i ended up in jersey just kind of like not doing anything man just fucking playing in little bars like open mics oh you sure, know? sure and i became like the drummer for this open mic band i was like all like oldies like hippie fucking shit and i was like hey i'm just keeping the metronome here you know i, I was just and that's all i had and i didn't know anybody and by then you know we're older so yeah that's right I was in, and i'm in another state pretty much so i'm not talking to anybody until uh so like maybe two years ago i i met some dude at, uh i met some guy that met me at karaoke and invited me to the studio in that same studio there was a dude that came in and started like telling me that he had a metal band and and he's like oh what do you play i was like okay that's what i do that's what i used to do right now i'm yeah. just jamming out with this guy He's like, oh, can you play the Maidens? Can you play the Megadeth? I was like, yeah, I guess. And then he, he kind of like auditioned me almost on the spot. Yeah. And I was like, I was playing, and he's like, oh, dude, you're a metal drummer. I was like, yeah, that's what I used to do. Man. Yeah. And then it's like, I have a band, and normally we we need a drummer. Normally we used to pay, they used to pay a drummer to play their gigs. Um, and, then, and then he was like, yeah, check it out. So I, I heard the stuff, you know, uh, and I was like, man, this has a lot of potential because it was really heavy, like good groove oriented, which I love, you know. And, um, but the singer was like, the singer is the guy that actually got me. He was like, oh, I'm more on that. Heavy, I see. Heavy stuff. You know? I mean, uh, that kind of like, what do you call it? Power metal? Yeah, power metal. Yeah. Kind of vocal I stuff. didn't know what was yeah. going on there because I didn't know the guys, but it eventually turned out that the, one of the guitar players was the, was the brain of the band. I and, see. And me and him clicked really well. The other guys fell off, the bass player and the guitar player, because they were kind of young. Again, they didn't want to take it that serious. The, the singer left, and then. I started, and then we continue this new band. So I have a band called uh, Inga, I N G A W, I see. and I and I just we've been driving right now, just writing songs, recorded in my garage because he knows uh, recording. And uh, oh, I gotta say something funny. <laughs> uh, after seeing one of the videos with Manny, uh, Manny Cortez, I kind of saw that he had a little drive in him, then you know, towards the end or something. And I decided to take it upon myself to contact. Uh, because uh, I didn't have his number. I haven't seen him in years. Yeah. And I contacted Ramon and gave him his number. So I kind of fed him a little bit of what we had going on. And he liked one of the songs. And he was like, this is good, man. Can you have more? I was like, yeah. And we're looking for a bass player. You know, it's there. It's not a big deal. I'm not trying to push it. Sure enough, he liked it so much. He learned the songs. He came like probably like two weeks ago wow. to audition. And me and my other uh, bandmates, the two guitar 
guitar players, Beto and Isaac, they were just like, dude, he's awesome, he's perfect, he's great. I'm like, you know, man, he's an awesome guy. We always talk good about him. You know, he's a great personality and a good musician. And he fit in perfect, man. Wow. And now we have a, I have a complete band again. Wow. So he's, uh, he actually, we actually rehearsed in my garage in, in, in uh, New Jersey. Wow. And we're getting ready to, we did a video already. Well, this is before Manny, so we have a legit yeah. video that's going to come out. And, uh, and all our stuff is going to go on the social media, you know, Spotify, iTunes, whatever. Wow. So, yeah, so I'm that's back. Cool. That's cool. So I'm cool. back. I've made a whole full circle back and forth, <laughs> and I'm going all the way with it. Man. And two, like, two, two Bronx boys back in a band together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Brass pretty, Knuckle Brigade and is, is doing this, a but, similar thing. Have back, you heard of them? Catch, be, no, back. Brass Knuckle Brigade. Brass Knuckle Brigade. It started out with Martin from Billy Club, oh, playing with guys who I don't think any of the rest of them were from the Bronx. But now there was like a little change in lineup. Uh, Muttley is playing in the band, and oh, okay. also Phil's son, Jay. Oh, yes, is I heard. I did hear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. That's but yes, cool, man. Oh, anyway, some cool Isn't stuff Phil, happening. Phil and his son playing in the band together. Phil, no? Phil isn't, just his son is oh, playing okay. in the band okay. with Muttley. Phil's, I think. Phil's son Jay is the yeah I saw that interview in that's band. awesome man it's great yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, Phil's and Phil has a uh, uh, Knights of the Black yeah oh, Knights of the know. Black yeah. is I think dope, so. Nando Jay mm-hmm. Phil I mean I think those other people yeah are some people man I think you're kind of like you know like striking a match in our asses like <laughs> with all this stuff because like <laughs> yeah, yeah. like the fact that I saw that and I got Manny like and yeah he, like that's awesome that's I would have cool. never contacted Manny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's awesome. Um, now, uh, just to just to ask about like a couple, well, not 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 really old school Bronx bands, but they were you know like I guess a few years before um, you all seen in the BDC and all. Did you all ever have much dealings with like District Nine or Fahrenheit Four Fifty One? Did you did you all ever hear them live or anything like that? So no, like we. So we didn't start getting introduced to those bands until after we started yeah. learning about all the other Bronx yeah. metal bands and stuff. Because then it was just, you know, one person talked to another person. But then, and then we started hearing these band names, you know, like, wow. Yeah, it was in our radar. I mean, we've heard yeah, of them. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, but we never. And I might have seen, I think I've seen District 9 live. And I was like, yeah, okay, we, they're dope. we even started know, seeing these bands. Right, because, yeah. like, through the other bands, we would go, like, yeah, they're having a, a show here, a show here. And then that's, that's right. when we start just branching out and just, like, yeah, even yeah. opening up more. Yeah, 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 yeah. Even Neck, like, I, the first time I saw Neck was because they were having a, a, a show put together. Um, and I think it was a show with Billy Club Sandwich, as a matter of fact. And they, it was a pretty good show. It was the first time we heard Neck. Um, but yeah. they, those bands all already knew about District 9 and Fantasy yeah. 451 and stuff like that. And we, we didn't. Like, the one thing that we, I don't know if we mentioned it, way we grew up and the way we felt we were isolated from a lot of the other bands and we it was in one way a sore spot in another way not like we felt like we were already always the outside yeah, bias, yeah, yeah. outside band yeah trying to totally. fit into something that wasn't quite yeah. what we were doing for sure but we loved it so much and it, it like opened up doors and opened up just our yeah. our uh, appreciation for and it, style and it's love. cool that all those all these heavy bands from the really brutal ones yeah. and they had their fans man they were fucking we'll open up for them or you know yeah. we'll play together like they have respect for us I guess and it's nice and, you know they could have yeah, just been exactly. like nah they don't fit in with us right. but you know it's cool. <laughs> I mean we played I remember this gig I don't know if you remember this we played with Irate and it was legit yeah. and it was funny it was actually kind of weird I was like what I think they opened up like they went first and I was like what the hell like, well, we should yeah, be Irate a few times like, yeah we played with it but, but I, oh I'm sorry I'm going to say it's CBGB we played at CBGB oh, yeah, yeah. oh okay 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 yes. okay and it was I us see. first. No, it was them first, and then, and then us. And yeah. I was just like, "What the hell?" I was like, "Should have been the other way around," you know? Yeah. But it was uh, who knows? Maybe it was in that cassette because I think Malik shout out. He was shouting out people. Awesome. Awesome. It might have been that. It might have been kid. the cassette. Yeah, it might have been that, uh, that they recorded live. Yes. Wow. And I, I think we played. If I'm not mistaken, but, CBs. Right to Zero played CB two or three times, and yeah. side. I know I played two or three times yeah. CBs before they could finally close down. Yeah. 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 But the thing I, that I thought it was really awesome as always is that, you know, that they thought that they give us a chance to play with them where they're already, like, going places and getting big, you know? Yeah. And they had a fan base. You know, and the whole Castle Heights era, that was amazing, too, because, you know, it was just fucking crazy. It was, like, yeah. you know, fun times, and they already had, like, established a, a good fan base. 
all the oldest Bronx bands, you know? Yeah. Uh, and even some Queens bands, because I was a Queens area too. And um, and it was cool that they let us play, you know? Like, there, when we were right to serve, and then at least with Amoria, it was different too. But, you know, it was, it was good to be part to be part of it and be accepted. Absolutely. Like, you didn't feel like that, like the weirdo. Right. But I think it's funny is that, that that actually, it kind of, what's the word I'm looking for? Indirectly affected how things transition. So it's like, because we weren't really trying to do the heavy thing at first. You yeah. know, we wanted to mix it up. And because we were surrounded by so much heavy music and hardcore yeah. music and deathcore music, exactly. eventually the members of the band started kind of going in that direction as well. Uh-huh. So our, it's like our likes and interests started changing due to that as well. I you know, because see. Because in the beginning, we weren't, yeah. that's not what we were thinking. Yeah, you know? yeah. At least everything was more cohesive in the beginning. Yeah, like yeah, we knew exactly. we wanted to be this kind of <coughs> groovy funk battle band, whatever. I, th- yeah. I think there was a time, by the way, they, uh, we played at CBS. There's a guy that's like, you guys are like funk about yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, true. I never heard of that. It's like we heard we heard that style funk metal, funk metal, movie, funk movie, metal, funk metal, uh, metal, metal fusion. It was like so many different yeah. versions of what we were, so we that, were trying to give us a name. Yeah, as, a but that was a cool style thing. Of music. That for me was like cool that we didn't sound like everyone else, you know. But eventually, we ended up trying, and, and this but, is why the differences started happening. It seemed like we were trying to fit in yeah, to see, something that we were truly not, and that's kind of yeah. what like. Yeah. Apart. I see, I see. But also being around these people, you can't help it but be inspired by them. Yeah. You know, yeah, like exactly. I got inspired a lot by the rhythms and beats, especially the drummers, you know. And uh you know, and uh the riffs too. Sometimes I think our riffs would kinda like get a little heavier because of those guys. So it was cool. Yeah. You know. It was it was all about being inspired by everyone else around, yeah. you know, not just the music that was out but like your peers, you know. The so, local bands. So it, it Dur- during the time of rights reserved, if you all like, you know, if someone asked you all like, you know, what your sound was or things like that, um, what kind of answer would you give them? If if you just say we sound like rights reserved, that's you know that's mm-hmm. fine too. But um, how would you describe? How did you describe your sound at the time? So well, kind of like what I said. Like I guess a little bit of everything. Yeah. Like, uh, it was a- it was definitely rights reserved, yeah. It yeah, was just it was like a rights reserved like sound. Because yeah. even after a while, some people would come up to us and tell us, like, like now they'd be like, "Dude, I used to watch you guys. We had some fans, and we didn't even yeah. know it." We a couple know of our, people liked us. So a couple of our close friends mm-hmm. um, used to tell us, "You guys were ahead of your time at the at that time. Yeah. Like we were doing something that not many other yeah. bands were doing because it, it was like clear definitions of what style exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we were like a kind of fusion yeah. of that." It was cool to and hear, and it was great, but we didn't feel that way. And yeah, that's yeah, right. Like we were just playing what we liked, yeah. Yeah. With the different music that we were hearing. And it's because of that reason that we sounded like so different, because we had little droplets of different styles and genres, and then we just messed it all together. <laughs> and here it is, and that was right to serve. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You know? So, yeah, it's like, dude, I don't like know. We can, you know, we can start naming bands. Like, that's one of the things I used to have to do all the time, is somebody says, yeah. what did your band sound like? It was like... Well, you know this band, you know this uh-huh. band. You just name like, other bands. Start yeah. naming bands that are yep. totally familiar. And they're usually commercial bands because sure. yeah, they won't know the underground bands. That's they right. Know the underground. So, we, so we would just have to hear it, and then that's when it makes it yeah. oh, yeah, you guys sound unique, I guess. Yeah. Whatever your style is. That's right, yeah. But yeah. I always kept, I always kept, me as a drummer, I always kept my grooves, my, my funk, my, you know, the heavy parts of it, the little intricate, you know, like difficult nappy parts I guess if I could uh-huh. so and I still do that sometimes uh, now you know the but core the, the core of it for sure is like a head nodding type of yeah sound, yeah yeah, you know? yeah, like yeah everything yeah. and I guess that's something that could be said about like all the Bronx band all the Bronx bands we all have like rhythms that yeah, yeah, yeah. bob your head it's almost like a hip hop thing you know yeah it's yeah. from the Bronx you know like, we yeah. all have like this fucking funk like good rhythm style like but it's heavy yeah you know? Yeah, yeah, that's that's actually gonna was gonna be the next question I asked oh. you is to, to you know share your thoughts on you know is there a Bronx like heavy style or sound and and if there is um, you know how would you describe it? No, like back in the day. Back in the day, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I would definitely say that would be that groove hip hop deathcore like you know it was. A, have to say it's like a hip hop like uh driven sound like it yeah. has it had this that's like, a lot of funk yeah funk mad old groove shit like it, it was that's the core of it yeah, it yeah. was just this nice rhythm like yeah. 
steady beat that you can groove to, you can you can appreciate, and then you can go from there. Like it was, that was a core of it, and you can just kind of you know change the tempo, change the, yeah. the the melody, whatever the case. But that that core sound, like, and that's where I think a lot of the deathcore type of thing. <laughs> yeah, I think the deathcore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because but that's where all those bands, like the Bronx style of metal and rock and all that stuff I, during that time. Was that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I tell you this, like when I first heard Rachel, <coughs> and I was like, oh shit, this is like groovy, like heavy, but not not knowing what was to come with the death yeah. core and all this yeah. stuff. And then I was like, it's not as like 10 times better because, it's, you know, Rachel's more like, you know, not too much distortion. Yeah, sure. And a lot of rapping. But then when I heard the brutal stuff, especially from around the way, you know, it was like, it's got that groove. And we were going to shows and it's like, dude, it's that fucking Bronx like vibe that you got, you know? That, yeah. That's, that's very unique. And the drums, the drums, to me, again, I, I bring these two guys a lot. Like, you know, uh, I'm going to say this, like, I feel like we were like, you know how like in a, in a Kung Fu movies, it's like, oh, I see you learned that style from uh, Master <laughs> Chang. That's right. That's to, right. Me, <laughs> to me, it was that style of the way I played drums. Which, by the way, I think this may be the reason why I almost I was jamming out with uh with uh before this band that I got now, I was jamming out with Golden Mantis. I was gonna be the drummer for them. And okay, them yeah. <clears throat> you know things didn't work out because of fucking jobs and stuff like that. And then um, but uh, I knew when Ramon asked me, he's like, "Do you could do it?" I was like, "Of course, man!" Like, uh, um, you know, what's his name? Uh, Frankie's DNA is in mine. You know, from listening to him and being yeah. around him. And then UVs too, like the style, you know? Yeah, sure. And it's like, I don't remember. Those are the two drummers that always come up to mind when I think of Bronx. Yeah. And they fucking had that shit that I love, you know? That it's just like a Gigi yeah, too, man. Now you hear Gigi, you can tell. Absolutely. I'm like, oh, fuck, Gigi. Hey, and Gigi know, got tech. You know? I know many. So those rhythms are the ones that drove. Yeah. It's like the backbone for that Bronx sound. Yeah. And then add the guitars, you know, the the, the, the screaming, which you kind of like rhyme almost like Kandiria does stuff like that. Absolutely. And that's why I think it just turned into. I know Manny touched on this, but I have to say it like that. Frankie was a trap. His, he was so unassuming with his, like, just skills. But just, you see this, like Manny said, you see this little guy, you don't expect anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then it's like, what? How, did, how does he do that? Like, the flow it just yeah, made yeah, it yeah. look so easy and effortless. And, like, so drumming wise, when I think of these bands, the, the three drummers, I think, like, during the during that time frame, was definitely uh, well this order. There's Frankie, Alex, uh, drummer from Kendaria, Ken, Ken, Ken right? Ken, Even Ken, though he's Ken, not Bronx, yeah. but he I think yeah. he, he, he influenced just, like Kendaria influenced a lot yeah. of Bronx sound. Maybe. Just to, just because they were from New York. Yeah, right? yeah, that's right. That's New York sound. Right. Absolutely. But and then uh, um, Irate. Um, yeah. yeah. UV. Yeah. 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 UV. Like and go of course you said go to Mantis. Yeah. Frankie. Yeah, because Frank, Frank, yeah, Frank. Yeah, so like those drumming from those bands alone kind of like I really truly feel like a lot of that sound came from that like the ability yeah. that they can keep that you know keep people interested in and feel the feel the rhythm in your heart and stuff and really like just want to get into it like take it to that deeper level take it in, you know wherever you else you want to take it but that that core beat is there and that's the Bronx that's like the Bronx yeah. sound yeah, much, yeah, you know? yeah 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 like you could tell like I could tell if I hear someone playing the drums yeah, I wonder if I could find somebody be like, oh, you got like a little Bronx in it, you know? Yeah, like yeah. Frankie is like definitely, like, <coughs> definitely. I think he's like the person that, to me, when I think personally, the Bronx sound is that. It's like his, his style, you know? Absolutely, yeah. And then most of the other guys, but yeah, it's like that, that. That would be it. And the, the rhythm, the groove, um, and then add the heavy, the the street griminess, you know? Because yeah. everybody obviously. You, you know, like driven by hatred, all those guys, you know, like grimy, you know, you're like everyone was kind of thugged out, you know? Yeah. <laughs> there was a time when everybody was kind of thugged yeah. out, which is another thing that why we felt like we didn't fit in there. Oh, uh, because Rice Reserve sure. wasn't as. Yeah, we weren't yeah. like that at all, you know? Yeah. I mean, we grew up in. in of in course, yeah. Fucked up areas too, but still, you know? We weren't like that, but um, yeah, it, it, it developed into what it is now, which is when you hear it, you know it's a Bronx sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, was there anything else that either of you would like to like to add, um, uh, you know, like in closing or anything that we haven't talked about that, you know, you want you want to talk about? I'd like to say, like, I wish, I truly do wish there was more raw music like that now, like live performances or more, like, just more of a social aspect. Like, 
in-person aspect because now it just seems like everything's diluted to being online and you can't really truly connect too much unless you have someone directly that you know in in the scene or you're being introduced to someone because online is just it's, it's just too much there's it's not a local scene anymore yeah you know it's just worldwide if you think about it like how do you how do you hone that down like i don't know if that can be done anymore yeah you know? like, i think it is coming back a little bit i've been seeing a lot of hard, yeah yeah like the hardcore scene is popping up again like getting a little crazy like oh shit if it's hardcore metal or metalcore whatever yeah I'm not, yeah I'm not sure like for me it's kind of like i i still support my friends and i'm like trying to kind of when i when i hear that they have a show and i can make it i'll try to be there for them um but it's just that like it's just the immediate people i know like i don't sure see you know bigger things yet maybe it, it is there or it's just me being secluded from it um but yeah i think i like to see that like i like to see you know, more of uh like before like i'll give you an example so brooklyn like the city all the bands the performances all the the shows were in the city and moved to brooklyn right? yeah, yeah or or brooklyn and uh, queens like, yeah but now it doesn't seem like that's there is a scene like that anymore like brooklyn even seems to be fading away when it comes to like live bands and, yeah. and performances you gotta like mm-hmm. look for venues i don't know if that's yeah true i think you're kind of right but when it comes to new york city yeah, yeah. You're right like i apparently like the west coast or other places like hardcore is blowing up like yeah. it used to be here yeah yeah, yeah. Like how it was <coughs> back then, you know, in the Bronx. so yeah, yeah i don't know i feel like it's really truly i don't know if it's an not, online thing opposed to like there's not too much local. of that unity in it. right yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's right. You know, <laughs> i just wanted to add something that uh is, is something from back that I, I thought it's funny or you can add it later yeah man, <laughs> that sure. it's when we were in high school how, how going in the bronx growing up in the bronx and no mm-hmm. one's into metal at all and you feel like uh you know like outsider Definitely. and weirdo and shit so i remember when me and leon went when we from from uh, is 174 we went to stevenson it might have been our first day yeah and here we are walking yeah, and we're like we're true. like t-shirts like beavis and butthead like because <laughs> we literally had like a slayer and i had like a mega shirt totally and we're like really went, i think we went to like pick up our schedules or some shit like that you know how you took them going and then we were walking out and then we were walking out and it was just metal heads <laughs> they were legit metalheads hanging out by the bleachers, and we're walking, yeah. and they're like, "Hey!" And we're like, "We're like, oh shit, great! Like, Something shit's gonna pop picture, off." Picture, it's like it's almost like a movie. It's scene. like uh-huh. a movie. I was yeah. thinking, it's, that. it's like, like a movie scene. Yeah, kids on the stoop or whatever by that the school. Some all everybody in black t-shirts with like yeah. maybe even leather vests, and yeah, chains and stuff like that, with long hair and everything. And we're like. <laughs> it was probably like 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 it was a zero point zero one percent of metalheads. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the you entire. Know? It was like hardly nothing. Yeah, but it was like yeah, like four and five kids. And I was like, hey, you listen to metal? And we're like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and they were just kind of like, oh, like come and hang out. And then we would we literally went there, and then yeah, the was conversation like, was all about like, dude, what kind of stuff do you like? You know, Slayer versus Sepultura. Da, da, da. And that's how we became like friends with uh. With, and they were all like with the small metal. They were like juniors yeah. and seniors. And yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't uh, like so we were like than, freshmen, uh-huh. you know. Yeah. So we were like definitely timid, but it was it was really cool to see that, you know, like yeah. The, the day we go to school, like all of a sudden we we found our niche. Or <laughs> I, and I think that's 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 the cool shit about like everybody that grew up in the Bronx that we all kind of found each other eventually. Yeah, you know? yeah, you did. It, yeah. it was bound to happen. Cause you hear somebody like I met Manny humming a Metallica song. These guys, oh, you listen to metal, you know. And then we went to the Aggressor concert, you know. Uh-huh. Then you meet more people, and then you know, whoever hears your band, they're like, oh shit, I know someone that plays here and there. You know, it's all a chain, you know. Yeah. And then it's really cool that we all got like, like we, we left our our print, you know, imprint, like just kind of fucking, you know, we all found each other to do this stuff, man, to do this, this metal thing that awesome. that the Bronx was not known for. That's which right. Which is really cool, you know. Absolutely. Everyone thinks, you know, Spanish music, freestyle, and hip hop. Uh huh. But you know, and going into that, I just want to say thank you to the Bronx Historical Society. Sure, thank sure, you. yeah. Thank you, man, for putting yeah. this together. Cause this is this is amazing, and to have this, you know, documented and everything is pretty awesome. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now you helped out. You helped. You even helped me out with whoever. Or whoever's down to get together. I hear Ramon's doing, you know, go to Mantis now. That's again, right. Kinda, right. They got their first show. I think, yeah, coming, yeah. Their first in Yonkers, guess, right? Yeah, return yeah. show coming. Yeah. July 20th. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, dude. Yep. 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 
I yeah. think I think their cassettes are like like online, like selling. For they are, like, yeah, they are. Like yeah. their first demo is yeah. for sale, but also they have like the complete discography. Yeah, dude. Like yeah. thirty yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah like yeah, hopefully, yeah. you know, all of this like starts like you know, get everybody like. You know, We've been hearing like a couple of our friends saying, uh, "Put a right to zero reunion back together and stuff." And that would be so awesome. But, that would be know, cool, but I don't to pull know. to pull the members of the, of right to zero together is not not an easy task. Yeah. That's not easy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see what happens. But thank right. you both for uh, taking all this time and sharing uh, so many memories today. Absolutely. Um, thank really you. appreciate thank it. You, man. Thank you for sure.